CJ Daily Biz News. Today is the 4th of October. Lots to talk about today. Lots of things happening across the business ecosystem of Haiti. Uh, and we're going to talk about every single element that's affecting you know, the person, you know, the entrepreneur, and, 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 and of course, the, the, the ultimate change maker who's going to come to the country. And we're going to talk about it in a way that uh, you can actually impact, you actually use this information to, uh, to improve your chances, improve what you're trying to do, and give a full perspective of Haiti. First things first, we're going to be right back. Uh, I'm going to do some things in the background here to get the show generally up and going. You know how it is. It's one man show out here, right? So we'll be back in about five minutes. Enjoy the intro. We'll be right back with Haiti Biz News. You know what it is. Current events uh, as it relates to macroeconomic condition. You can always catch us live uh, every Sunday. Hey, uh, Biz News Show. We are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we are on Instagram. You can always catch us uh, 11 a.m. Uh, on Sundays. We are live on air. We're going to be talking weekly happenings, focused economically, focused on what has happened. And we're going to dissect it in an unbiased impartial way and a big part of what we do here of course is hey business show you know I, I did not see and do not see any place online where uh folks can get uh, a cnbc bloomberg like focus on what's going on you know, at the macroeconomic level of hey so this is what this is what this program is here to do It is news show Sunday, 11 a.m. We're here every Sunday, right? 11 a.m. You know, maybe it's a new show. It's uh, Sunday's weekly, which is a CGN today. It is a new show. We talk about news, current events uh, as it relates to macroeconomic condition. You can always catch us live uh, every Sunday. Uh, right? Hey, this new show. We are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we are on Instagram. You can always catch us uh, 11 a.m. Uh, on Sundays. We are live on air. We're going to be talking weekly happenings, focused economically, focused on what has happened. And we're going to dissect it in an unbiased, impartial way. And a big part of what we do here, of course, is Haiti Business Show. You know, I, I did not see and do not see any place online where uh, folks can get uh, a CNBC, Bloomberg like focus on what's going on you know, at the macroeconomic level of Haiti. So, this is what this is. This news show Sunday, 11 a.m. We're here every Sunday, right? 11 a.m. You know, maybe it's a new show. It's uh, Sunday's weekly, which is a CGN today. This new show, we talk about news, current events uh, as it relates to macroeconomic condition. You can always catch us live uh, every Sunday. Hey, right? this new show. We are on Facebook, we're on YouTube, and we are on Instagram. You can always catch us uh, 11 a.m. Uh, on Sundays. We are live 
on air. We're going to be talking weekly happenings, focused, economically focused on what has happened. And we're going to dissect it in an unbiased, impartial way. And a big part of what we do here, of course, is Hey Business Show. You know, I, I did not see and do not see any place online where uh, folks can get uh, CNBC, Bloomberg like focus on what's going on you know, at the macroeconomic level of Haiti. So this is what this is what this program is here to do. Boom, we're back. Hey, this is New C. Genty. We're on, we're streaming across Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, through Periscope, Instagram, social media. We're on it right now. We're streaming, right? And I want to welcome folks on. We're 11 a.m. ish, ish is what I need to update that intro sequence to say. <laughs> things, we're, we're, we're juggling a lot of different things here. We get, we get on as soon as we're able to. And today it's 1130. But nonetheless, folks who, our usual folks do do come on in. You know, I'm, I'm very happy to have uh, everyone who watches the show regularly and anyone who's new. Um, I think that intro basically sums up what we're about here, right? And and what we're looking to do. We're looking at, and ultimately we're looking to have a conversation. So do don't be shy in terms of commenting. I want folks to go ahead, feel comfortable, share your perspective. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a one man show here. It's really important for folks to understand that. You know, I do this not because. I could do it in different formats. I could just do it in uh, how I originally used to do Haiti Biz News, which was creating short little clips of news information and dropping it. But I'm, I do it this way so we can have a, a conversation, my audience that's here, uh, what we, we do here so we can have a conversation every Sunday, right? And it's and also, you know, it's, I want to make sure folks understand CGNT is not a one perspective show. Everyone who uh, is engaged in, in Haiti and doing different things you are, you do have a opportunity to share. And I need not necessarily agree with it, right? We'll keep it on no matter what your perspective is. Just don't spam my channel. Yeah, that's the only way you'll get banned. Don't spam. <laughs> Beyond that, you know, you know, you can be Biden, you can be Trump. You know, I'm just giving dichotomies and perspectives here, right? Feel free, hop in, right? It's the 4th of October, lots to talk about today. Lots to talk about. First and foremost, Dem changer langue en créole bien rapide parce qu'il y a toujours des monde qui a rentré qui a dit que créole là du au niveau des offenses qui créer par rapport que on a ici en bas doué yo bagui yo bagui yo bagui là yo bagui the right comme on dit ça the right pour parler euh soit rien de Haïti sans pas faire en créole et je dis toujours nécessaire pour me dire ça parce que ni critique numéro 1 me recevoir dans tout comment moi dans tout vidéo moi une question criminalité liée pour parler sur Haïti et ou pas utiliser créole d'ailleurs faut qu'on voit qu'il y a un petit accent créole là mais dans les petits accents nous gars pas dans créole mais c'est que faut nous comprendre bien moi des têtes tout moi des têtes tout sérieusement moi des têtes tout qui quand on carré c'est voir des informations du Haïti là-bas a venir faire le non sens qui qui on va dire tête froide nous pas qui pas rentrer dans politique qui pas passer à Haïti dans bêtise ça veut dire on pays sale on pays criminalité on pays qui a du crise et vous avez joué, vous avez joué peut-être en créole, vous avez joué sur Radio Metropol, vous avez joué sur Radio Caribé, peut-être, vous avez parfois comme ça, comme ça, vous avez joué sur Tripotai Lakai, sur n'importe Radio AM, quand vous avez joué là, vous avez joué sur Monsi Sayo Fenet, c'est by des nouvelles sur Haïti, 24 sur 24, ok? Mais la réalité est assez que, Américain en blanc, ce n'est pas là la suivre l'information, non? C'est sur CNN là juste là suivre l'information oui. C'est sur Fox News là suivre l'information oui. Donc c'est sur et qui côté le côté ah mia Miami Herald là suivre l'information oui. Tout côté ça yo. Yo ba yo ba gagner bon pour ça ici. So euh avenue du d'accord sur toujours les ba information sur Haïti en gros dans presque mon style pas pour gagner monde pour qui oui oui pour ba information très bien en créole. Vous avez beaucoup de gens sur Napoléon qui a un encadrement des de, de entrepreneurs de jeunes qui a fait très bien, toujours en créole. Vous avez l'autre côté ça, vous avez l'autre côté ça, vous avez l'autre côté ça, 
simplement chante ça son côté me ka di donc moi même pour te ka prendre ça ba ba jam gi un côté anglais qui a ba information jam de besoin ni on 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 ça peut-être fait qui ba toute perspective yo d'ailleurs ça c'est premier ba là c'est un ba là tout il y a des monde qui intéressent en Haïti qui pas parler créole de base yo même haïtien il y a plein haïtien pour nous comme ça il y a plein haïtien qui il va grandir en créole là c'est c'est dans celle anglais peut-être tu ca fait comme on a puis tout on ba dernier ba là tout Anglais c'est le langage des internationaux. Même si nous sommes chinois, à pas apprendre anglais puis on parle. Même nous sommes russes, même les gens en guerre avec les Américains, ils ont tout qu'on parle anglais. Pour nous trouver bien, même les ennemis des États-Unis, ils comprennent que les bagues l'autre langue puis on parle c'est anglais par rapport du monde, du monde parle anglais. So, moi de tout le monde qui a venu sur ce camp là, qui a vraiment fâché qui les gens ont mon monde qui a qui rentre sur ce sujet Haïti qui pas pas le droit là c'est d'ailleurs on peut parler on peut parler très bien ah ok petit accent whatever petit accent mais c'est que l'espace ça c'est un espace tout le monde accueille tout le monde du monde accueille puis on comprend puis on reçoit une perspective sur Haïti qui complique qui pas faut qui sous salte et qui va vendre une image qui mauvais une image j'avoue tout ma cache bah ça qui qui il m'a la paix à notre mais montre une image qui complète qui pas toute sensation qui pas analyse qui très euh ca du focus sur pas seulement mais baio mais pour qui ça baio là et finalement côté nous parler et qui gens nous caler en côté qui pimon tout ça en anglais pour les français des 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 perspectives des opinions de Haïti et et haïtien mon sens que nous pas un seul monde pas un seul style de monde pour éviter rien ba un bon fruit ba ça So, ok, moi, monsieur, toujours qui est pour me dire ça. Un jour, je suis pas besoin de dire ça à chaque fois. Je ne sais pas si je suis un jour pour me Comme moi, finalement, je ne sais pas si je suis un jour pour qui vraiment fâché, qui ne pas ça existe. Je ne sais pas si je suis un mais En tout cas, that's just a quick uh, little rambling I have to do every, every episode to explain why there has to be a space where we can talk about Haiti in a very cool, collected way in English, you know, because there's an army of people who just find it totally offensive that I speak. I'm speaking of Haiti and, and not doing it in Creole. It's insane, but it is what it is. Um, but of course, I, I make sure folks to uh, make sure folks understand that um, you know we're doing it not only for other Haitians who, who have a preference for English, but also to ensure that um, we, we do it because uh, there is no other place in English that folks are able to receive information on Haiti uh, without it being CNN, Fox News, Miami Herald, and they only highlight the absolute negative because that's what sells they're in business first to sell controversy they sell they write stories on what sells and what sells is the very possible worst image of Haiti and though we don't hide anything negative here about the country it's it's it's, it's very important that we approach it in, in a full full complex array uh, and in particular with with the emphasis of how to move forward in a constructive manner where we're, we all can put hands in the pot to move the country forward because that's the only way the country will ever move forward is when we do that we work collectively to move forward so again thanks for the bit of usual housekeeping i have to do a little uh asterisk i always have to start the show with uh youtube c Genty for sure uh, has dropped a brand new episode um uh, when it comes to firefighting uh if you guys have not seen it and i'm telling you a lot of folks have not seen it the video is incredibly underperforming i don't quite understand how firefighting isn't in Haiti isn't being shared aggressively throughout all the interwebs it's really cool right and and, and if you stick if you watch the whole thing and uh, you, you have a scene where actually the uh, firefighters they're fighting a fire and even at the end there we had went to an actual live fire i don't understand this should be at 10k views this should be at 20k views i don't understand so goes guys if you're watching this i got 58 people on my live right now on, on facebook and youtube Right, I need those 58 people. Each one of those hit that share button. Go to that video, hit that share button, and share the incredible coolness of firefighters. And hey, this is um, Delma. I mean, this is Delma Fire Station, but we have ones in Taba, we have ones in Pichonville, we have ones um, Quarter Bouquet, we have ones in uh, um, where am I missing? Uh, of course, Port au Prince, right? And and there's starting to be a proliferation of of these of these. Uh, firefighters in the country, which is absolutely important because for so long we didn't have firefighters. And I do want to give a special shout out to Nate Lassour. Lassour. Uh, Nate uh, has been extremely uh, important to make uh, to connecting me with the firefighters over at Delma. In fact, uh, uh, James 
Williams Doris was someone who uh, worked very closely with Nate. Nate is a Haitian American who uh, uh, worked worked very hard, works very hard uh, to help uh, the situation out in Haiti when it comes to firefighting donations and had organizations where he's flown out uh, actual firefighters from America, Blunts, folks who've never, never been to Haiti, flew them out to, uh, to, to help train Haitian firefighters. Uh, and, and, and when I drove by one day, uh, the Denmark fire station, I saw, oh, this is, this is new. I, I, you know, the first person I thought of who could potentially help was Nate and Nate right away connecting with James Darius, James Darius, who you saw in the video, uh, and, uh, and, and, and the rest was history, right? And so uh, hats off to uh, Nate Lasore. You should certainly uh, Google Nate's name. Uh, he's doing, he's done some great things uh, in Haiti in terms of, uh, of, of um, the firefighter corps. I'm dropping his name real quick on YouTube, uh, on, on, on CJF, you can see his chat. Do Google him and he has a lot of different things he's, he's worked on, working on, hooked on Haiti is another thing uh, as well that he's, uh, he's, he's recently started up. So uh, do, uh, give Nate some appreciation there, uh, and I do hope that at some point in the future to probably highlight uh, some of that work um, that his, him and his organization, his team is doing. Uh, there. Again, hats off to Nate. Didn't get a chance to necessarily mention it in the video per se, but did want to take some time to uh, give him a shout out this morning as relates to the video. But again, go share the video. Go watch the video. Goodness gracious. It's one of my, to me, it's one of my coolest videos I've done. <laughs> it should be right up there with all the other good stuff. You know, you know, a lot of folks who critique me for only dropping food videos and, and, and poke my belly. You know, this is I try to do other stuff. You know, <laughs> I'm just gonna be doing food videos. This is the channel I'm going food video only. If y'all don't, don't show the other cool stuff, we're doing some love and appreciation. I'm kidding. I appreciate anyone who watches anything uh, for sure. Now uh, we do. Let me drop the banner here on uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, real quick. Uh, the banner shows, of course. Uh, very importantly, to share the live, partage live, live, partage, right? This live as well, share it. But also, we do have a square cash available too for folks who feel inclined. Excuse me. Choking on live on air. <coughs> Give me a second, guys. <coughs> oh, man. Yeah, word of caution, guys. <coughs> Do not drink soup zoom <laughs> before you go on air <laughs> and do a live stream. Because the reason why is you'll burp and that soup zoom it is all all of its awesome flavor <coughs> will come up <coughs> and try to choke you. So, <laughs> <coughs> I think I'm good. I think I am okay. <laughs> Let's get the show going. <laughs> All right, note to self, less soup jumu, <coughs> maybe half of what I usually consume. <coughs> <clears throat> All right, I think we're good. Where was I? <laughs> Where was I? Um, right, right. Square cash. Uh, well, I was gonna say, if you know, given what we do when it comes to uh, highlighting Haiti and, and going out to different parts of the country, um, you know, it, it helps tremendously uh, to, to to you know whatever it is, five, ten, twenty, whatever bucks, because <clears throat> that money goes to uh, supporting the logistics of. Um, of, uh, of the team, because I have a team behind me. <clears throat> I have a team behind me that helps, uh, uh, and of course, lodging and et cetera, food, et cetera. And that all helps. And of course, equipment. <clears throat> One reason why we're talking to folks right now on uh, Facebook and YouTube uh, with a much, much clearer image is because we, uh, we did, uh, you know, a lot of folks who are contributing, we did reinvest those funds. So, of course, uh, that is available to you guys. But again, as always, the most important thing, the most important thing you can do uh, is like the video and certainly share the video. This video right now that you're watching, share it. Also, really quick on Instagram, <coughs> just be aware that, uh, <coughs> man, <whew. coughs> I really got my super dreamer got the heck out of me. Give me a second. <coughs> uh, just be aware that in an hour, uh, Instagram uh, is going to cut off. I'm not going to renew it. So you're more than uh, able and available to go over to the um, 
YouTube and Facebook page to, to uh, keep up with what's going on um, uh, and, and watch the rest of the stream. That usually goes, honestly, about an hour and a half, two hours, <clears throat> to be honest. All right. So <clears throat> let's, uh, and of course, hopefully I might, my throat will get back to normal here <laughs> after just choking. Yeah, so I do apologize for the, the coughs and all that. Um, so let's see. Uh, let's say what's up to a few folks. Because again, uh, the point of this is to, I'm a co-host here. You guys are also co-hosting with me. So do drop a comment. We read everything on air, right? So let's go ahead and let me just read some of the folks and see who's here. Jean-Claude Jean-Cy. jean Happy to have you in the chat. Lovely King Magni. Uh, 11, 25, 11 a.m. You know how it is, man. You know, it's, yes, exactly. It's one of those two times. We got lovely King Magni. Happy Sunday. What's up? Um, <clears throat> uh, Yavao, bonjour. Uh, Edrin, Exnot. <clears throat> Good morning. First time I'm seeing the chat. Hope you're subscribed and do hope to see you next Sunday. Redney, Vincent, also someone, a name I'm seeing, I'm seeing uh, for the first time. Uh, hello. Good morning. Uh, Franz Camille, a regular. What's up, Franz? Good to have you <clears throat> in the chat this morning. We got Paul. Villefranc, bonjour. LM, bonjour. LM, man, good to have you in the chat. As always, LM, happy to have you, brother. Betty Leville. Uh, I think I've seen Betty before. Good morning, Betty. Uh, Esta Conge. Allo, allo. Uh, Peter J. Tene. What up? What up? What up? Uh, we got Odigna in beauty. Sup, folks. Sup, right? Uh, Ali B. Uh, saying, Anglais, please. Anglais, s'il vous plaît. No, I got you, Ali. Lizzie, what's up? Housekeeping. Of course, you always got to know. Always got to do it. Always got to drop that upkeep <clears throat> an explanation <clears throat> music lover two what's up what's up we got the uh, book tv uh for show thanks for the encouragement for english no problem thank you brother uh we got pierre de meza uh give me some info for show i feel you i got your info is coming don't you worry about it <clears throat> uh we got let's see what else we have here i didn't even know peter says he didn't even, even know he had firefighting in the country that's very cool Ali B says, I'm Arab. I hate, I had I like Haiti. Please speak English. No problem. No problem. I got you, brother. Uh, no problem. Uh, we got Odinga giving us some reference currencies. We're going to talk about that today. Don't you worry. It's a very important story. We got to break down. Philly Dom's in the house. Give us some Philly Dom's love. What's up, Philly? Philly is a guy <clears throat> who's doing some incredible stuff. Uh, when he's in Haiti, he's showing real streets, right? And he's uh, showing Haiti to the world uh, as, as his expression. Uh, goes to show, because it goes to say, <clears throat> right now he's in Dominican Republic showing some real cool stuff in DR. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I feel the Dom is someone you want to make sure you follow. I'm sure you guys are already following Philly already, but those who aren't, you know, go, go give Philly some love. He's doing some great, great things out there on his YouTube channel. Uh, so much appreciation to Philly Dom. Bro, good to have you in the chat. Mrs. Grace, hello, hello. No, it wasn't smoke. <laughs> it was, <coughs> I'm still, I'm going to have to take a break before I start the news story here <clears throat> to really <clears throat> get my throat. A chance to, to recover for about a minute. Yeah, but no, it was super jumo. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Um, uh, Jordan D, what's up? What's up? What's up? We can have some super jumo later. Just make sure you consume it slowly and don't do a live stream. <laughs> like I've done. Uh, we got the love in the house. What's up? Mayor St. Jane, what's up? Uh, we have Liz Z in the house. What's up? We got uh, J. Phil Stoon. Good job. What's up? What's up? Uh, good to have you. KK in the house said he loved the uh, firefighter video. Great. I'm happy to hear. Make sure you share the video. Uh, let's get, let's get those, that video. So a little bit more numbers, guys, because um, that's just really cool to have to have that. What's going on over there? Edwin William, what is up? What is up? What's up? What's up? <clears throat> good to have you in the house. Phil Charles in the house. What's up, Philip? I hope you're doing good this Sunday, man. Happy to have you in the chat. Ernest Steele, what's up? What's up? We got ZX4 or ZX24ME. What can do Americans to do to help Haiti? Uh, simple, simple question, support Haitian products. One thing that is only one thing in the world <clears throat> is moved and shaped by one thing, one thing only is commerce, it's business. You know, so I would implore folks, you know, if you spend 10 bucks on charity, drop it to five. because charity still has a little degree of importance, right? Especially for in times of crisis, right? But I'd say make that other five a conscious ex effort to go buy Haitian products. And you might be saying, see, Jensi, well, the Haitian products, isn't that? It's kind of hard to find. Well, there's plenty of Haitian coffee. There's plenty of Haitian coffee, right? Um, and, and that's certainly something you can uh, buy very easily. Singing Rooster's one, Rebo Coffee's another, right? <clears throat> and, and of course, there's lots of products 
that are actually shipped into America to Haiti, you know, just made in Haiti products sold in Haiti. Um, you know, is, is just a quick Google search and you'll find so much. So just just really just try to think when you're trying to support Haiti, try to think inconvenience, believe it or not, think inconvenience. How can you inconvenience yourself, inconvenience yourself to buy Haitian products instead of going to Walmart and just picking up, um, you know, some honey off the shelf. There's some great honey producers that are being sold in, in, in America right now. So let's hold off and say, let me, let me wait a week. Let me order it. It comes to my house. All right. So that's really thing. That's, a, that's probably the model I'd probably say. How do you inconvenience yourself for Haiti? Haitian business. Go out your way. Buy Haitian products. Because when you do that, you're supporting jobs. You're supporting economic development. Right? If more Haitians did that. Right? If more Haitians really made a conscious effort. Like every other people's. Indians do this. Um, uh, you know, every other people's do this. Chinese, Asians, people, they all keep money in-house. And, and that's something black people as a whole fail tremendously at. And Haitians similarly tremendously fail at. And really, that's the simplest, simplest answer is the way you support Haiti is by going out your way to buy and support Haitian businesses, Haitian products. You know, it's one thing to go to a Haitian restaurant. Yeah, anybody can do that. Buy Haitian products, made in Haiti products, buy them. Uh, and and uh, that's really the best way. And second best way, visit Haiti. You know, visit Haiti. You know, make sure you come, spend your tourism dollars. You can keep, you know, as a Haitian, you should once a year try to spend a week, a weekend out in Haiti, bring a couple bucks and bring a friend. <clears throat> And, and really influence the country that way. So those were the big two, two things you should do, you should consider uh, when it comes to Haiti, all right? So what else, what else do we have? Um, let's see, what else do I want to say uh, here? Let's see, Junior Flesh, what's up? Um, uh, why is it, like I saw a question that was pretty interesting here, I think I ran by. Um, why, is a Jewish, why is a Jewish person a richest person in Haiti? Because he took the risk to come to Haiti and do business. Whereas so many people will see that and question that. Why is this the case? Simply put, you know, he pulled the trigger, came out here and, and used his resources um, to build real industry. And, and honestly, anyone who would critique that is someone who's sitting on the sidelines yelling, right? It's, it's real simple. I'm in Haiti. I'm not complaining about who's rich. I don't really care who's rich, who's poor. I'm just out here doing what I got to do, right? And that's where the mentality we have to have. Who cares who's the richest? What can you do to come to the country? Impact. And, and, and grow wealth and, and grow wealth amongst all? That's the question you need to be asking. Who's, who's currently rich is absolutely irrelevant question. I'll be totally honest with you, right? Loves the Sanguine vein. When's the next one? Um, I, I, well, Sanguine particularly, I don't know. As I mentioned, I do want to do a hiking sort of video um, uh, at some point very soon, right? But when it's going to happen, I don't really know. Um, uh, let's see, Haitian products, yep, search away, Ernest Steele, what's up? Haitian coffee strong, love it. I'm cool, I got water. <laughs> uh, okay. Thank you, thank you. Got a little, little bit of help with the throat. <laughs> My lovely wife was watching the stream and was like <laughs> helping her brother out, so thanks. So as you get 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 one get one of these things that you call a wife, you know it's <laughs> it's it's a great thing. Let me tell you, help me on some coconut water. <clears throat> oh, I'm, inst I'm feeling instantly better. <clears throat> I'm feeling instantly better. <laughs> uh, let's see what, what else were we saying here. All right, L forty eight. I got fit new la new la. Happy to have you. Um, uh, I don't I don't have the time to timestamp, bro. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man, to actually go in, sit down, do the timestamps. I don't got time. Now, RL48, if you want to send me the timestamps, and I can copy and paste it in there. Any, in fact, any of my fans who would feel value in, in, um, in, in finding out when I say these different things and timestamp them, and, and I'll just put them on there, you know, I'm more than happy to do, do it that way. But me personally, I already taken, I take half a day on Saturdays to prepare my show notes. I spend two hours on the live with you guys, and I've been counting the fact that you know we're working on actual media content. So I, I'm sorry, I, I have to draw the line somewhere, and I, that's why I don't do certain things like timestamps. But if any of my 80 plus viewers who are watching right now are so inclined and feel it's so important, you're more than welcome to help me out. Timestamp what we're talking about when we talk about it. Send it to me, and I'll plop it in. Sounds good. All right, thank you, brother. Thank you. Let's see. Uh, support business. Thank you, Miss Grace. Kilo Diom says, um, would you say it's a good idea to invest 
in Haiti right now, I, I think it's always a good idea to invest. Only You have to do it slowly and carefully. Uh, it's always a good time to invest. If you've seen the video, for example, with Charles, um, Charles and um, Colleen from Bois, for example, they invested during the embargo. And they've been in business in Haiti for 20 plus years and grown tremendously uh, during that time. And, and so there's never a wrong time to invest. It's just it's how you invest. A lot of people that you've maybe run across, um, they've uh, what happened to them is they've done it wrong. They've done it too short. They trusted the wrong people and that didn't network aggressively enough, didn't do their homework enough. It's always a good time to invest in Haiti. You just got to do it very carefully and very astutely and you'll be fine. Trust me. All right. I, I've met too many, too many, too many folks who have, uh, who have been successful no matter when they, they invested and the folks who, um, did poorly, unfortunately, I'm sorry. They, they had, they, a lot of times they had no business in Haiti doing business. And it's just, just being real with you, you know. <laughs> All right. Uh, let's, let's give some IG some love. Let's, I saw some, some chatter on IG real quick. Let's see what's going on in IG real, real quick. Let's uh, scroll through and see what IG is saying. Want to make sure IG is getting some love while I'm here. Uh, Ken Ricardo says, why is stuff dropping so low like that? And Haiti, we want to talk about that. We've already talked about it, but we certainly will review it uh, today. So stay tuned. We got um, uh, uh, Zivayojo Domino, maybe I'm saying it right. Will they, they exchange at the proper rate in Haiti or will they just give you $50 at the American dollar? I don't know what you mean by proper rate. The rate is determined by the market ultimately, which is being tampered and hampered by certain elements. But I don't know who they is, right? Everyone has to provide rates at, per what the market is saying. So I'm not too sure. I don't really follow your question. Follows up says that I think all Haitian people should speak English. Ignore French. English would be much more economically beneficial. Perhaps, perhaps, but there is a cultural history there that uh, a lot of Haitians um, find very important. And, uh, and so at the end of the day, you know, culturally we are ultimately, a, uh, we have a lot of history with the French. Uh, so I'm not too sure, uh, certainly a blanket removal, but I certainly do think uh, we should embrace English a lot more, particularly as a language of business an opportunity that exists, particularly given our proximity to America, makes a lot more sense. And personally, if it was up to me, if I was president tomorrow, which again, I have no political ambitions, let's be clear, uh, I certainly would make uh, the three and three national languages and everything we do, everything we write would be in three different languages, English, Creole, and French, right? So, uh, but I do hear what you're saying. I'm certainly uh, of that particular same mindset. Let's go ahead and look, let's jump into the uh, <coughs> headlines and see what we're going to be talking about today, COVID. We're going to be talking about COVID. COVID's still a thing. We're going to be talking about it. Exchange rate is one of the first things we're going to hop into. So don't you worry. I know a lot of folks are <clears throat> hitting me up for exchange rates and, and what's going on there. New government budget's out. A new government budget is out, all right? And we're going to be talking about that. Industry, right? The passage, CBTA, for example, something's happening there. Very important. Final steps, perhaps. We're going to be talking about travel. There's an airline coming to Haiti. Well, if you read the headline, you already know what it is, which it is, but that's that's what's coming up. Electricity, some interesting updates as relates to that, particularly in the funding department when it comes to electricity and how things are moving forward. And finally, we got agriculture. We have agriculture coming, and we're going to be talking about that today, right? So headlines, those are the headlines. Can't wait to hop into, right? Now, let me, I'm going to take, I'm going to take just one minute and, and see if I can do something about this throat of mine. All right. Just give me one minute <laughs> and let me just see what I can do with this throat. Let me finish down in this coconut water. Let me mute my mic real quick. All right, they got, they got good. They got all right. <clears throat> all right. <clears throat> Thank you. Thank you guys for your patience as relates to the voice. Let me, let me grab, let me hop in right in, before I start reading the headlines. Let me just really quick hop in the chats one more time, make sure I'm up, caught up, up to date. All right. Uh, no ganja allowed on the stream. Nah, man, this ain't <laughs> no smoking, man. Don't you worry. Just damn darn subjumu. Kicking my butt, all right? Let's see what else we got going on here. Now, what's the percentage of Haitians who speak English? Actually, quite a bit. Actually, it's just quite a, quite a bit. You know, culturally, you know, America and rap music and, and 
hip hop and pop uh, affects Haitian culture just as much as it affects, um, uh, uh, you know, the world as it does in Haiti, right? So uh, English, even if it's not spoken by a lot of people, uh, it's understood by quite a bit of people. Uh, as a percentage, I, you know, um, I'd probably want to say somewhere around 30%, you know, just to kind of give anecdotal numbers here. I'm about 30, 40% of Haitians speak pretty, like, solid, solid English, you know. Um, that's why I'd give that number there, right? Um, let's see, French language uh, creates the vibe, caste system. Um, uh, it's beautiful language, but it's useless. Um, you know, it, it does, you know, French, you know, so here's the thing. With French, I actually lived in France for a, quite a good stretch of time. Um, I can actually, I can listen, I can hear French, I can speak French, you know, um, but I see when I say, when I do it like this, I speak French, I do it because French, the French are extremely, uh, I mean, that's something they got to fix culturally. If, if they ever really do want their language to be as pervasive as English, um, they're very particular about how people speak it. And uh, they look down upon you if you speak it, uh, if you don't speak it exceptionally perfect. And it's not a stereotype I'm throwing. Like I've met French people. Um, I've actually had contracts with French, actually France and French. And the experience I've had has always been extremely negative when it comes to their language. They have very little quarter when it comes to even slight deviations from perfection uh, from their language. And, and it's always weird to me. Like, why would I want to ever speak that language? That's one reason why when I came to Haiti, no matter who I just run into, who I speak to, I, I, don't, I would never respond to anyone in French. In French, because, you know, the Haitians in France, Haitians here take to that even more aggressively. You know, the French are pretty bad when it comes to opinions of people who don't speak pristine French and the Haitians take it even further. And, and so that's why you'll never, ever catch me speaking French with anyone, despite the fact that I could speak it. You know, it would be accented as accented as my Creole probably, but it's as verbose as my Creole. But I would never speak it, you know, just, just because of that. Right. And so here's what it is. You know, that's that's someone that's for a Frenchman to understand uh, to explain one day to why, you know, <laughs> you know, the French want to play uh, global hegemony, but then they, they're so aggressive to, uh, or so unforgiving to people speaking their language. That's something they got to figure out at some point. I don't know. But in the meantime, you know, English doesn't have that problem, you know, <laughs> you know, so you look down upon for other reasons in America, but not necessarily for your, la for your language. <laughs> right. Um, uh, let's see. Uh, what other question? I think I got everybody, right? Um, I think I got everybody. Um, uh, let's see. And then we got, and finally, we got, nah, it's best to keep multiple languages. How many countries can you speak three plus the national language? Not too many. Not too many, uh, Cleos. Not too many. In fact, Spanish is very pervasive as well, as well in Haiti because of our proximity to the Dominican Republic, our proximity to Cuba, right? So, uh, so I certainly agree. All right, let's let's finally let's finally get to what you, why you came here, why you paid admissions. Let's talk about Haiti Biz News, and for the for, for whoever is keeping track um, uh, on those timestamps, you know, this is where you want a timestamp. We're starting right now. <laughs> so let's go. COVID COVID numbers are in. We're at sixteen fourteen. This time last week we're at nineteen oh six. So we've had a two hundred active case drop. We had no uh, no additional, actually two additional deaths since last week, uh, 229 um, from 227 uh, active deaths, okay, uh, in Haiti. Uh, interestingly, uh, we've had a few days in Haiti actually where uh, we didn't have any increase in COVID cases, uh, which is incredible, um, extraordinary. In fact, a lot of people question it since our airports have been open. Um, in fact, I, I was just at uh, De Cameroon yesterday don't, I wasn't there for vacation. I was there for work. You'll see, you'll see what's coming up this week on GC Genty. But I was there and I tell you, I've never, ever, well, actually, well, no, let me take it back. I've seen it as packed um, during major events in the Cameroon. But natively, organically, I've never, ever seen the Cameroon so packed before. And I'm looking at that, I'm like, man, well, first off, I'm very happy for when it comes to Haitian tourism. But then on the flip side, you know, uh, I'm concerned because these people are coming from countries where COVID is a thing, right? And so I'm very, you know, a lot of people 
who, who know this are, and then see numbers like zero active new cases in COVID, um, you know, that doesn't make sense, <laughs> especially in a world where we have right now the president of America um, fighting for, you know, fighting COVID personally and uh, his wife and et cetera. Um, you know, it's, it's very hard to believe Haiti has zero new active cases, right? But nonetheless, we're, we can only go, you know, see Janty here, we can only go off, you know, the quote unquote official numbers and the official numbers are what I just provided, right? No new active cases for a few weeks. And we've got, we've had the largest drop in active cases um, since for the, going on seven, eight weeks now, the largest single week drop. So it is what it is. Uh, DR, Dominican Republic has seen also a similar, similar consistent decrease in active cases. They're at 22,393 versus 23,900. We got to talk about DR as always because we share island and, uh, and ultimately um, if things get out of hand COVID wise over there, it certainly will affect what's going on in Haiti, particularly since there's such porous borders. Uh, deaths are at 2108 versus 2087 um, in terms of uh, deaths week over week. So they are seeing a continual increase, but still relatively in, on par with the other weeks that we've seen for Dominican Republic, right? Uh, exchange rate. Let's talk about that. Let's talk about exchange rate. Right? A lot of folks are, are asking, and we talk about this every week, though. You know, so I think this is probably going to rehash for those who've been watching CGT consistently. Um, you, you already have the explanation, but we'll go through it again. Um, right now, we're at we're at sixty-two good for a dollar. Sixty-two good for a dollar. Um, and and this time last the, this last month, um, we were you know in August was it August. 18 August 24th around there, uh, we were at 120.5. So we've lost uh, just just near half of the exchange rate. Now, why is that? Right. First, first there there was a slight um, pushback on the value of the dollar internationally. That's what I always want to start with. That right. There was a slight decrease with the dollar losing some value, uh, particularly for for the towards the end of the week. A lot of big institutions were betting against the dollar. A lot of big institutions were putting money in Bitcoin and gold and silver uh, just because of the, 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 the increase of the dollar during a time of economic um, uh, problems in the country didn't make much fundamental sense from a, um, from a uh, for, for X perspective, right? And so there had to be a correction and a lot of big institutions, big money makers uh, were, were betting <coughs> betting against uh, the dollar. Around that time, the, uh, the uh, central bank saw that as an opportunity to uh, um, restore um, some of their stores of U.S. currency. And, and, and per um, uh, reputable sources that I can uh, feel confident enough to repeat, uh, they very aggressively um, basically liquidated their stores of, of good and, and purchased dollars, which in turn, they focused on distributing those dollars in the market, right? And, and this action, not necessarily the, and that's what made it so different from before, before when they've done it, they've done it before, uh, they just, you know, they had stores of dollars and they just kind of released it. This time they actually reduced almost, almost, almost entirely their organic stores of wood that they had to purchase dollars, right? And then turn around and then did what they would have done, which is give dollars to the market, right? To the Haitian banks, et cetera. Importers, that's another big thing they've done differently as well. Directly to importers, they gave money. Uh, they were giving versus allowing importers going to the to commercial banks. Uh, and they were giving them at much lower rates, right? Uh, in other words, uh, much cheaper rates than, um, than the commercial banks were, right? In addition, the central bank also very aggressively, um, uh, very aggressively, uh, what I was talking about before, uh, penalized the some of the, two of the biggest uh, 4X institutions in the country, a capital bank and a uni bank, uh, got hit with penalties equal to around one third of their budget. We talked about that a few weeks ago when it happened, but without really understanding the implications of what it was going to happen. Because what the implications <clears throat> implications of that of, of what happened was was that <clears throat> it became uh, you know if you hit two of the biggest forex um, players in the game, uh, it's Haiti's a small town. People never people don't appreciate how small of a town Haiti is until they move here until they come here, 
right? And so if you, you, you do something and you impact one of the players, all the players take note. All the players, you know, it's a small town. Everyone, you know, you find out very quickly when you're doing business in Haiti. You, very quickly you find out, you know, you, have the, you get phone numbers of every single other person in the industry that you're in, in addition to any other industry that ties into you, right? So very quickly, communication happened. You know, when one guy got hit, and very quickly they changed their behavior, right? From speculating in one direction to not speculating at all and or speculating in the other direction. May it be out of spite, may it be out of, you know, uh, understanding, hey, this is the, what the government wants us to do, let's do it. Maybe a combination of both, I don't know, right? But nonetheless, those factors came together, right, to cause a very aggressive shift in the other direction of the group, right? So, and that's really the best explanation thus far um, that have that that can be provided to why the good is where it is. That's the best explanation, right? Because fundamentally, this is not this good being where it is. It is not an economic. It is not an economically sound situation that has it where it is. I need folks to understand that, because economically speaking, all the fundamentals that would natively, naturally shift the value of a currency versus another, it should be going the other direction. We should be pushing in the other direction. We should be probably at 130, 140 as of today, not at 60. Why? What does that mean? Our currency is, is number one, principally affected by national production. Folks need to understand that. National production is what changes really fundamentally and permanently the value of currency, right? Of a country's currency. Haiti does not produce anything, right? Uh, our number one export, 90% almost of our exports actually is textiles. And we don't really produce it. We're, we import um, some raw cloth, right? Um, there's some light transformation that are done. When I say light, you're making, you know, T-shirts, you're making underwear, you know, very limited value added stuff for Hanes and, and et cetera, Fruit of the Loom, et cetera, very low value products that are sold in bulk. And, and, then, and then ship back. It's not, we're not making laptop computers, for example. We're not making, you know, um, uh, if we stick to clothes, we're not making um, Versace suits, right, that are sold very expensively. You know, it's very low quality, you know, on a level almost refurbished production of products and sold back to America. Our next biggest, you know, valuation uh, set of products, remember, I already said nine, almost 90% of our exports are clothing. The next biggest set of imports are, are, are mangoes. Mangoes are pretty high up there. Um, um, uh, oh my God, what's the other one? It comes with, it starts with a V, guys. Help me out. It starts with a V. It's used for perfume, cologne, um, vervir, vervir, vetiver. Ah, there it is, vetiver. Vetiver is another big, big export of Haiti. It's grown over over the years. Uh, coffee, not nowhere as much as it used to be back in the day. Um, it's, it's been on a steady, steady decline for decades. The coffee is still somewhat, somewhat exported still, but all these are very, very, very small uh, percentages, and nowhere enough to shift, um, nowhere enough to shift the the, uh, the 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 scale at all, right? And worse, as you can tell, you know, the Haitian government has done absolutely little to to support uh, agriculture, uh, support um, native exporting. Um, the Haitian government has, does not make it easy to register business, does not support business. In fact, um, you know, doing business in Haiti, you are you actually are put on a war path with the Haitian bureaucracy that tries to suck as much money from you in as, in as many possible ways as possible. Uh, I see Buick um, I always say your name. TV says Barbancourt. Barbancourt, <laughs> yeah, it's sold, but it's nowhere near, you know, in terms of national exports. It's a very, very small percentage. I'm sorry. So Barbancourt. Though is an export, a very, very proud export, I can, I can say, personally speaking, it doesn't shift the scales at all, right? So, um, uh, you know, and so in terms of, you know, support of exports, you know, Haiti doesn't do it, right? Uh, and and other, a lot of other things that Haiti could do, for example, I know of a sugar mill down in Leogan that um, a lot of Haitian diaspora, Haitian diaspora looking to purchase and looking to, and to, to do things, employ, um, but the Haitian government has not provided them an avenue to, to, uh, to take over 
that uh, plant and, and, and make it work. I, I, that's just one example I want to provide. There's so many other examples, right? And so as we look at that, national, ex, national production is not existing in Haiti, okay? Uh, secondly, the next big thing that dr can drive a currency to, I talked about mangoes, is very small. Maybe like the third biggest export, right? Very small. Um, this is for uh, Jonas Ten Menard, who came in late, right? The next, the next thing um, uh, that can drive currency organically is tourism, right? You know, as as people come in, they bring in dollars, they bring in euros, they bring in Canadian dollars, right? And they and they can drive the the the, the uh, direction of currencies because as you come in and you have to change your currency from yours to dollars. You're driving the demand, sorry, from dollars to good. You're driving the demand for good, right? And tourism has been on its way, way down, way. Now, sugarcane is not, uh, say, JK, to drop a question about sugarcane. Sugarcane has been a non-factor since the revolution. <laughs> I'm sorry. Sugarcane has been a non-factor. One of the first things we did when we, we, vote, we, we, we voted, we burnt down every single sugar plantation. You understand, sugar cane was a, was a symbol of, of, uh, of slavery, a symbol of exploitation of misery and one of the first things that were was burnt across the country was sugarcane and sugarcane plantations um so uh, you update yourself on our history <laughs> sugarcanes were has not been a factor for quite some time right um uh and so going back to tourism tourism is another great important factor right but the problem is is that we've had a level four advisory you know going you know two three years back to back off and on level four advisory usually you, you, he doesn't even show up on uh, what is that? Um, Expedia. Expedia is a under is a is a, a platform that a lot of websites use to book um, hotels and flights. <clears throat> For example, my my Chase credit card uses Expedia. And when it's level four advisory, um, it doesn't show up. You know, so you can't use your points. It's not easy for something when that happens. So furthermore, even though right now they're doing a pass on level four advisory because just about every country is level four because of COVID, <laughs> so Expedia like, well, we lose a little too much money if we just not put any website up. So, but that's certainly will, will change at some point because we're still level four officially, right? Secondly, um, pay lock. Remember, a year and a half, over a year and a half, Haiti was uh, in an absolute rut um, in terms of uh, political stability and, and you know the inability. Not, not that it was unsafe, but you just couldn't go anywhere because roads were being blocked and protests were happening everywhere in the country, right? And so that made it almost impossible for tourism and tourists. To happen so and now we're in COVID, and then COVID was another big punch in the mouth that honestly i don't say i know unfortunately of uh of, of, of too many hotels and resorts actually closed down um best western was was an example i'm going on sumer is another broke my heart these are very staple important uh places um but they were closed down because of just back to back to back hits against tourism and again as always uh, there is no organized um, force with the haitian government that takes uh, tourism seriously. When you look at Jamaica, Jamaica has a tourism board. Jamaica spends money in America, across the world, to show a positive image of Haiti to get Haitians or, or people across the world to come to Haiti. Um, they organize, they work with the different big hotels in Haiti, I uh, sorry, in Jamaica, to make sure what do you guys need. How can we help you? How can the state help and assist you to make sure you guys you know, to make it understand you guys are important for us? Or we want to make sure what can we do to support you guys because we understand for a country to work, for our country to work, we need tourism to be successful, we want tourism to drive employment, what can we do? As they, they come humbly to the private sector with this question, the private sector speaks to them and they work, they act, they pass bills, they pass laws, they, they put, put private police in place to protect tourists. They do every single thing possible uh, as a working functional society that understands what needs to be done. And Jamaica, Jamaica does it. Dominican Republic, Dominican Republic, they get it, they do the same thing. Any place in the world, in the, particularly in the Caribbean, where you see Costa Rica does it. Haiti does not, and that's why Haitian government doesn't do it, right? There's been a lot of talk about Haitian tourism, nothing actually ever gets done when it comes to Haitian tourism. So tourism is another thing that, in fact, instead of going in the positive direction, in the three years that I've been here, they've been going in the other direction been going down, 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 down. So again, so I just told you, national production is a really important part of what makes currencies 
move in the direction we've seen hasn't been happening. Tourism is another thing that allows the currency to move in the direction we've seen hasn't been happening, right? Uh, and so, and so when you look at okay, and there's other aspects too when it comes to the perception of our country and the perception etches itself to the currency. For example, political stability, right? And as you know, right, as we as we're talking right now, we don't have a functioning parliament, right? We have you know so many groups who are trying to remove um, President Moise from office who say we don't want to do anything except we need him to to um, uh, you know what's it called quit. Right. And, 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 and there's a better word for quit. You know, just the, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Anyways, they want him to quit, <laughs> to leave office. Right. Don't even finish his term. Right. And they don't agree with the things he's doing in terms of the CEP. They don't agree with, with what he's doing in terms of reconstitution, the reconstituting the constitution, um, given that parliament does nothing. And, and since everyone blames the executive man, resign, thank you, music lover. Um, and since the, everyone blames the presidency anyways, might as well give the presidency the capacity to actually move the country forward in a real way, right? Because anyone who knows anything knows that parliament has all power to all power, all understand, underline it, all power in the country lies in parliament. But if you ever hear a, 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 a deputy or a senator go on radio in Haiti, they say, oh, the president is stopping us. How? How is the president stopping you? The president has no power constitutionally, none when, when parliament's in office, right? Uh, and so because of that, you know, he's, the president's moving forward, trying to realign the Constitution to make it, to, to make it where you know, the, the executive branch um, can pass a decree and after even during parliament and, and, and it becomes law after two months if, if the parliament doesn't vote it down. Right. And this way you can get around the fact that parliament does no work at all. Right. Um, and, and a lot of folks don't agree with it. You know, I understand the arguments, whether or not what he's doing is constitutional or not. I understand the arguments. I recognize the arguments. I agree with the arguments, but then I see the reality, right, of how Haitian government works. Something has to give, right? We can sit here and say things need to be done constitutionally all we want, but and of course, I, the, the biggest argument I hear is you can't fight desert with desert, dude. Don't you know <laughs> when you're in an emergency and the and the ambulance is, is running, the ambulance doesn't follow green, red, yellow traffic lights. It, it, it breaks rules to be able to save lives, right? In an emergency, you can't ask those uh, finding that emergency to, um, to follow the same rules and thus not get anything done, right? Anyhow, that's just my humble perspective on it. I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a constitutional scholar. Right? I'm not someone who uh, is in any power to do anything. I'm just sharing a perspective, right? And, and, and so uh, political instability has, has been on the rise. And finally, general insecurity when it comes to certain pockets of the country in terms of gang, gang activity and, uh, and a lot of other very negative metrics have been on the rise, right? And that also affects the perception of Haiti in general, right? Even though, again, I, we talked about this in the past and those insecurities specifically align in specific areas in the country, right? And you as a tourist, you know, you're, you're, it's like, it's like, it's like, it's, I always need to explain this, you know, because they, people swear all of Haiti is Englewood or is City Soleil, right? So it's like, you go into Chicago, there is no, for no reason, are you going to go to Englewood? When you're going to Miami, there's no reason for you to go to Liberty City at 4 a.m. at night, right? Uh, and for the same reason, when you're as a tourist come, you're not, you're not going, you're not going to Del Mar de. You're not going to Matissa. You're not going to Villas de Dieu. Right, so I don't understand how you can get under a connection that Haiti's unsafe if you're not going to where the unsafe stuff's happening. Haiti doesn't work that way. You come to Petroville, you come to Mufwe, you come to Kenskoff, you come to uh, Thomasin, you, you go to Fursi, all these different places that most people go when they come to Haiti. And it's and it's there's there's nothing there but uh, good food, good people, and a good time. Right, but nonetheless, the perception of insecurity has been up, and so all those things put together, when you put that in a box. And you, and you take that box up, right? That box is a box of that weighs down the currency in the other direction, right? Nothing has changed fundamentally, nothing, right? Except what I, we explained before I got in the exposition, which is we have a government through the central bank very aggressively doing things to manipulate the foreign exchange rate, right? And guess what? Guess what? It's not going to last. 
right? What's what the, what the government's doing is not going to last, right? There, it the chickens are going to come home and roost, right? And I promise you, before the end of the year, I promise you, you heard this on CGNT first. You're going to have one day, one day, one 24 hour period where the forex will dive, right? Right now we're at 62. Promise me, I promise you, there's going to be one day you're going to wake up, you're going to read a news headline. It says, one day, 24 hours, Haiti from, from 68 to 80, one day. It's going to be like, it's like a rubber band. I want you guys to understand, it's like a rubber band. You can't, the more you fight it, the more you pull it back, the more it's going to spring back. It's going to boom, it's going to spring back because you can't fight the market. You can't fight the invisible hand. The invisible hand's going to win. I'm sorry. If you don't do the fundamental things to influence the invisible hand the right way, fight corruption, make it easier to do business, protect people doing business, invest in courts, invest in judges, right? Invest in rule of law. Right. If you don't do the fundamental things, very easy, fundamental things. Right. And, and from the DGE, put a corrupt officer, an anti-corruption officer to make sure rocketeers can't rocketeer. Fundamentally, pay your DGE employees. DGE is the IRS office for Haiti. Pay them. Actually pay them salaries, real salaries that they can live. With, right. And if you don't want to pay all these many, many paper pushes around, move electronically. Move the DG, the DG, the IRS of Haiti, move it to much more electronic. This way you, you need half of the employees you currently need, right? If it's an issue of, oh, you know, salary is a very expensive thing. Believe me, I have employees. I understand it, <laughs> right? Right? Move it to more electronic. You need less employees, right? And it's a savings right there, right? So many ways to go about it. That's how you change the country and you improve the economic situation and the currency permanently, multi-generationally. That hasn't been done in Haiti, right? The last thing I want to talk about when it comes to the currency has to do with effect, the effect that it has amongst the society as a whole, right? And I can tell you as a, as a business owner, an owner where you know, I'm, 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 my company is, is very, my companies are very people-centric, right? People-based between my staffing company, between my outsourced company that I, that I own and manage and operate. Um, it's, it's very tricky because right now, um, my highest expense, obviously, is people, salaries. And, and, and this, within one month, my salary base has increased 2x, double, 50%. When, when you go to 120, because I, I pay in good, right? I, you know, legally, you have to pay in good. And, and so I pay in good, and my payroll has doubled, right? Because remember, it takes me twice the amount of U.S. currency to get Haitian good, right? It used to be 120 now, 160, right? To pay what I was paying before. And on top of that, as, 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 as a Haitian, as a, as a business owner who came to Haiti with a heart and a conscience, as, as, a, as the good was decreasing, I was increasing my employees' salaries. But I understood it's not their fault. They're coming to work, they're doing what they have to do. You know, why, should, why are they gonna suffer for, for, a, for an incompetent government that's not doing what it needs to be doing to improve the general economic situation? And so, you know, because I didn't come to Haiti to exploit my people. I didn't come to Haiti to, to make, put them in a, in a worse spot. So I made, I did the responsible thing and I rose their salaries as the currency was decreasing. But now it's biting me in the butt because now the, the now it's, it's double what I was paying just a month ago. Right. And I'm not in the only situation. I, I know a lot of business owners very similarly uh, were doing the right thing uh, and they're, Salary bases have increased, and in fact, um, they have had to let go of some of their employee base. Right? When you look at other entities, for example, textiles, you know, who, who employs up to fifty-four thousand Haitians, and certainly their large, their largest cost base is is you know is a salary. You know, they're in a situation where they are thinking about what they're thinking about potentially closing down their operations because of the fact that they cannot support. And they're not cost effective anymore. Right when you when you have your salary base double, it, Haiti doesn't look any attractive anymore. Right, it, it Haiti, you know, India looks more attractive again. Bangladesh looks more attractive again. Nicaragua looks attractive again. Honduras looks attractive again. Other places look attractive again. Right, right, and 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 and, and finally, understand too is that it's the unpredictability 
of the currency, right? The unpredictability of the currency that makes it a problem, right? The fact that you cannot predict where it's going to be tomorrow. Oh, by the way, Instagram, it's about to run out. So if you're watching on Instagram right now, go over to YouTube CGNT, go over to YouTube, uh, Facebook CGNT. The live is streaming there. Um, there is no cap there because, you know, those streams understand, you know, who does an hour live cap. I would not be renewing my streams. Okay, guys. All right. And so, um, where was I? Um, what was I saying? Um, the unpredictability. That's what I was saying. The unpredictability of um, of the currency is what makes it is what makes it so difficult, right? Is what makes it is what makes it difficult uh, in Haiti. It's not it's not even difficult for businesses, which is very difficult. But what makes it difficult is right is uh, more difficult is for the people, the regular employees. Um, who, you know, they're taking a particular, you know, payroll. Uh, particularly, there are some Haitians, um, some places that pay their dollar, their Haitians pegged to dollars, right? There are places that, that do that. And, and, and those folks have basically felt this. They were making one salary one month, and now, you know, their salaries are halved in the next month, right? And, and the worst part is when they go to the the stores, the grocery stores, for example, the prices are still priced at the what they were last month. So meaning they're getting hit twice. I need you to understand that. First off, they're, they're bringing home half of the pay that they were, right? Because they, after they convert it, they get half the good. And then they're still paying the rate from before, meaning they're in effect paying double what they were paying before, right? Because if you haven't changed the price and the, and the exchange rate has, has, has decreased, you're in fact, you're in fact, truly, you're paying double what you're paying before, right? So you're now, so you're making half your money, and then on the other side, you're paying double in in, in food prices and what you were paying for before. Wow, wow, you're getting hit twice, half the income for half the for double the expenditures. So the folks who are saying, oh, this is a great win for the pep, this is a great win for the for the people. They don't understand the reality, right? Now, there are places I am speaking with folks. There are certain places that you're starting to see a, a decrease in the in, in the prices for food. You're starting to see a decrease in the prices of food slowly, slightly, finally after one month, right? And, and hopefully that continues, right? And a big part of, of, of why it's been so slow is because there's a lot of the sellers are like, is this really gonna last? Is this really, you know, they everyone knows Everyone who's here in the country understands the fundamentals of the country have not changed. So it's only a matter of time before the prices go the other direction again. And nobody wants to be caught holding the bag. It's like a game of hot potatoes. You know what hot potatoes is? When you, when you, you, know, you don't want to be the last person when the music stops. Because the last person, when the, when the potato's in their hand, they lose, right? They lose the game, right? And losing the game is losing your business, losing you know, you know, you know, what you worked hard for. No one wants to be in that position, right? And I get it. I get it. Right. But right now, because, you know, you know, we don't know what's going to happen. You know, the, the grocery stores are throwing it in, you know, for example, the grocery stores are you're throwing it in the, in the hands of the of the middle class, lower class Haitian who's holding the potato right now. Right. And so time will tell. Time will tell what, um, you know, what will uh, what will ultimately move the move the pendulum. Right. Time will tell. But um, that's that's where we are, guys. That's the that's the uh, oh, remit, uh sorry, I even I haven't talked about that remittances, for example. Take a, take the person who's sending remittances, right? You know, you have a family who's, who spends, for example, you know, guys working in a dishwasher somewhere. All you can afford is sending a hundred dollars to his family back in Haiti, right? Now, last week that it, it get, that hundred dollars would give you uh, uh, twelve thousand good, and now this week it gives you six thousand good. And and the and the currency hasn't changed, right? I mean, the prices haven't changed, right? So this person, your the wife would go out and try to buy you know food products for the kids, you know, pay the school for the kids, school supplies for the kids, right? And nothing has changed price wise, but they're receiving half of the money, right? So that's just, that's another example where the again the three point four billion dollars of remittances we send every year, 
go and just go and support, you know, just regular people, pep, and the currency is affecting them negatively, right? And prices have not changed. So as so the list can go on and on in terms of examples. I have to move on to the next subject. But um, you know, I think you know, you know, I think this is probably the last time I go in such detail in explaining the currency because it's a very complex subject. Um, I've done it now three three weeks in a row. <laughs> okay, uh, it's a very exhaustive subject, um, and so uh, when I tell folks go watch this other episode, right? When I spent my time talking about it, <laughs> you know, that I'm not trying to be snippet, but it's a very complicated, long subject <laughs> that. Um, you know, uh, as you saw, it takes a lot of time to explain, right? But the short of it is, what's happening right now is 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 unnatural. It's um, you know, it is uh, what's the word? artificial is the word I want to use. It's artificial, and chickens will come home to roost. The, the we're only delaying the inevitable, and the currency is going to spring back. Now, I certainly hope it springs back sooner than later because I am hurting right now. You know, I it's it is I am. Hurting. When I, when I tell you, 50% of my biggest expense, I'm sorry, in my biggest expense of running business in the country, it's up by, you know, it, the price is up 50% for me, right? And I don't care who you are, right? But if I could tell you your biggest expense that takes up 60 to 80% of your business, that is going to double in three weeks. I don't care who you are. It's like, uh, should I still be in business? <laughs> should I take a little pause, right? Um, so hopefully, you know, things do improve at some point, even if, even if it just decreased by even 10, if it went to 70, it would help considerably um, in terms of my personal situation, but also for everyone in the country as well. Everyone in the country would, would different, you know, would, would, would benefit from actually being around 80. Good. I think 80 is a sweet number, right? Where, you know, it's down enough to sort of help our competitiveness overall. Right. But it's not so down um, to where, for example, another thing I even talk about, see how complex this is, um, is that when your currency drops that aggressively, that low, right? We're basically, our currency is almost equivalent to the Dominican peso right now. The Dominican peso is about 58 good, uh, sorry, 58 pesos to a dollar. When, when, when your currency is, is, is that strong, it makes importing and buying outside products more competitive, right? Because now what it used to cost you to buy that product in terms of its currency, it's much, much lower. And so because of that, um, foreign products become cheaper than domestic products. Like, like you know, anything. That, you know, so much comes from the Dominican Republic in terms of goods, right? And it really is, it's really going to hurt domestic production when, when, when you see such an aggressive decrease in the currency, in the national currency, and it becomes so strong, right? And so that's another aspect, another element to why, you know, this – Chain exchange is 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 not a good thing because it's going to hurt domestic production as well. Oh man, I can make an old episode of the exchange. I probably should. I probably should have made an new palais about this um, to really break it down and do it aggressively. I got a, a lot of things I want to do new palais wise at some point. Um, once I finish my book <laughs> um, that we're going to be working on, uh, so look out for that. Right, the currency still is an issue. We're still going to be talking about that uh, as new palais, you know, subset episode. The next news story has to do with the, the new government budget. The new government budget is 254 good. 254 good. Give me a second. The new government budget is 254 billion. It's a 4 billion USD. And uh, let's look at some of the aspects of, of it. So um, a lot of analysis is still happening on the, on the, on the budget. And so um, look out for more analysis next week, actually. But... Uh, when you look at some of the some of the things within there, we see that 52% of that budget is expected is expected to come from uh, from uh, internal revenue, right, and customs. Right, so internal revenue like actual taxes, taxes, income tax, um, uh, state corporate tax, and customs tax. Right, 52% um, you know, of that got, uh, budget. The rest is supposed to come from international aid and borrowing, right? Just so just folks know that the rest, almost half of the budget, almost $2 billion uh, is supposed to come from international aid, budget support, and, uh, and borrowing, you know, treasury notes, you know, loans from the central bank, et cetera, right? Uh, debt repayment, and in that same vein, when we're talking about borrowing, uh, we can see that um, 
just between this year and last year, um, we're, we're seeing uh, considerably more money being dedicated to repayment of, of, of loans because of the past two years, because of pay lock and other, other issues. And then we had a negative 2.9% in GDP, for example. A lot of the um, budget had to be covered by loans from the cent um, from, to the government from the central bank. Uh, and, and that uh, has meant that um, the debt repayment for Haiti has um, decreased or increased from 17 billion good per year to 43 billion good per year. That, by the way, for those who don't have a calculator handy, that is two, that's a 252%, 252% increase in debt repayment. That's just last year, right? This year, we expect to have even more growth in loans vis-a-vis um, -vis the Haitian government, right? And it's, it's very interesting. It's very interesting, right? Because Piaz Tika, you have to understand, uh, as, a, as a political philosophy, if we're going to rank them in terms of where they are, in terms of how we understand in America from, you know, you know democratic leftist through to, you know, you know corporate rightist, uh, Piaz Tika is pretty right-leaning. And, and, and thus, right-leaning entities generally prefer, you know, they have a preference for businesses, have a preference for expenditures, and also have a preference for sound budgets. But yet, but yet, you know, just like we see in America, uh, during Republican you know, right-leaning uh, um, administrations, we see always you see we always see a ballooning of debt during these periods, which is very interesting. I'm not saying anything about it. I'm not you know, casting judgment. I'm just saying it's very interesting that we're seeing a very large increase uh, in debt that we've had. Of course, you know everything has context, and we understand the context of the situation is that we've had um, a lot of instability in the country, and the, and the government has not been able to collect taxes for so many different reasons. And even the DGE, the, the Haitian IRS, has been on strike for many, many months uh, during last year, and that also stopped tax collection. Right? So context matters, but nonetheless, uh, the effect is uh, 17 to 43 billion uh, good in, uh, in debt repayment, right? Uh, IMF, uh, apparently interestingly, if IMF is gonna weigh in on, uh, on this because the IMF uh, has to approve our budget. Uh, say it again, I'm gonna say it again. The IMF uh, 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 has a very important say on, on, on the Haitian budget, which uh, of course, Leads to why so many, so many people, um, from a national, you know, from a perspective of the IMF, has such a negative perspective of the IMF. Because when you hear that a sovereign country has to go to an entity and say, "Hey, hey, sir, here's my, here's my budget. Do you, do you like it, sir? Can is it okay, sir? Is it, uh, is it okay with you, uh, madam? Uh, that uh, this country's budget is it okay with you?" Is it please, please, pretty please, pretty please with a cherry on top? Please, 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 please. I really, I really, I really like this budget. Please, can I keep this budget pretty, please? <laughs> you see what I'm, you see what I'm getting at, right? I get it. This, this, this channel is not a conspiracy theorist sort of ch channel, but the IMF and international donors are going to weigh very deeply on the budget, particularly when you. When you say that, when I already mentioned, only half of your budget is going to come from inter inter international, uh, sorry, internal sources, and the other half has to be given through banks and through the international community, right? You're kind. Of, this is kind of what happens, right? Anyways, we're going to leave that alone. I'll, I'll leave that to you guys to cast judgment and your perspectives on, okay? But you can already allude that I'm not a big fan of, of such a situation, right? And I'll leave it at that. Uh, the other big thing to understand with this budget is that 2.4%, uh, right? 2.4% um, is expected in terms of GDP growth by the Asian government. That's a, that's a pretty big, pretty big um, uh, increase because um, last year we had negative 2.9%. And so whether or not that really happens, you know, I can say it's possible because when you have such stagnation for so long, I think even the year before we had uh, around negative 0.2% or you know, GDP growth, uh, when you have such, such, um, such stagnant numbers, 
right? Um, you do have, historically, you do have a spring back that happens. Pent up demand drives um, clearing up of inventory, which, which looks very favorably on, um, on GDP numbers, right? But it doesn't necessarily mean the economy is actually better. It's just that you know, you're, just, you're just making up slightly for, for the demand that couldn't be sold and couldn't be executed, acted upon. Um, so we'll see. We'll see. I don't think it's too far fetched to say 2.4. I'm more concerned about next year. I'm more concerned about um, during this time period, what is the Haitian government doing to um, structurally, structurally improve its, its position and do, excuse that squeak. It's the, <laughs> The super jumble from earlier is yeah, causing my throat to act up <laughs> still. <clears throat> also, FYI, the uh, exchange rate, the budget, the Haitian government actually expects that the good is going to be around 70 to 72 good um, throughout the year. You know, so 70, 72 is what the Haitian government themselves are expecting the national currency to be. Okay. All right. That's that new story. Let's move to the next new story. Passage of the CBTA, CBTPA, I'm sorry, the CBTPA um, uh, is, a, is the Caribbean Basin uh, Treaty, uh, much longer name, of course, but CBTA is what it's known by. It's passed in the Senate. The uh, CBTA uh, has, has is, is, a, is what the HOPE Act is a part of. The big reason why Haiti even has a textile industry, I remember I already mentioned, I said that textile industry accounts for 90% of our exports. Um, the reason why we even have that in Haiti uh, is because of um, this this act, right? And um, and though someone had said uh, very close on respect tremendously, had said something last week. I could I didn't have a chance to speak on it, see it till after the fact. That the CBTA uh, has very other negative aspects involved. That um, though it did bring the hope back, it also forced certain tariff rates. Right, and certain um, behaviors in terms of importing that hurts Haiti, right? And so that's that's a great analysis, which I actually didn't even consider, to be quite honest with you. I only looked at the exports uh, of Haiti um, as it relates to the, the Hope Act, and I, I still haven't given much analysis in terms of uh, really looking at okay, what's the net effect? What's the net effect, right? Um, in terms of the, what the tariffs are, are, are forced that are being forced upon us, and what it does. For the competitive competitiveness of the um, products that are uh, supposed to be supposed to be, be supposed to be brought into America and how it um, to Haiti and how it uh, is affecting our domestic production. Obviously, that's going to be very negative. Um, that's just something to consider. There is a another element of the CBTA that um, um, really needs to be considered. So it's not a complete win. It's not a complete yes. All right, yay, textiles and exporting. It's not a complete win. Do have to appreciate that complexity, right? But nonetheless, for the 54,000 jobs that, you know, are being produced through the Hope Act and the textile companies that are here because of that benefit, uh, it certainly is um, an important uh, victory uh, from that perspective, right? And I do know a lot of people have very strong feelings about uh, our textile sector. A lot of Haitians abroad were like, well, they, these are sweatshops. These are sweatshops, see, Jensen. You know, they're mistreating our people. All right, cool, cool. Number one, uh, no, in no country in the world has not advanced without a bit of industry to support it, right? And, and every country, developed country that's moved from poor to middle, middle income has had a, a stretch of industrial work, factory work, right? Secondly, I always say the alternative for a lot of these women and men who work in these factories is working in the street um, as uh, Madame Segas, Madame Segas are basically fruit vendors and people who sell little bags, you know, have little bins of little knickknacks and they sell across the street. That's what their alternative would be in the hot sun, and hot rain, unsafe conditions, uh, making a fraction, as much as you may want to critique how much income they're making in these factories, what they would make without these factories is even less, even less, half, most likely what they would make um, otherwise. And finally, I always say it's, it's so easy to critique and throw stones. It's, it's, much, it's much harder to do the productive thing, which is build a home, build a glass house. It's easy to break a glass house, but how about you build a glass house? And don't, break, don't even just build a glass house, build a brick house, right? Um, and come to Haiti and, and, and open industry and, and pay, and you pay um, uh, Haitian employees the rate you feel is appropriate, right? Um, and I'm not saying that to say it can't be done. I'm just saying 
just feel so strongly about it, right? Come to Haiti, open a business, and, and employ Haitians, <laughs> right? Don't leave it to other people to do it. I'm just being real, right? Next news story has to do with travel. Really good news. I mean, I've been looking high and low, high and low for some good news as it relates to Haitian tourism. And I can thank you. I can, I can finally say it. I'm thankful to be reading this sentence. Spirit Airlines is back. Is that why I'm wearing yellow today? I don't know. Coincidence? <laughs> Seriously, coincidence. But <laughs> Spirit Airlines is back to OCOP today. Uh, not today, but starting December 3rd. They're going to be flying back to Cap Haitien. Cap Haitien, um, American Airlines stopped flying to Cap Haitien. Um, and, um, uh, and, and, and Cap Haitien. Spirit stopped flying to Cap Haitien. So Spirit, uh, so Cap Haitien, no you know, major international airlines flying in and out of it. Very problematic, given that Cap Haitien really is a beautiful city, very important touristically for, for Haiti. Um, just terrible news, viscerating news. Honestly, when I was, it, was, it hurt. It hurt, it hurt um, to, to have read it back you know, a couple months ago when it, when it happened. And, uh, but, but today I'm just ecstatic to say, you know, the horses, the horses have returned. And in fact, um, uh, they'll be flying also out of Port-au-Prince. They're, they're adding a second flight per day out of Port-au-Prince as well. So there's going to be more flights out of Port-au-Prince as well, out of Fort Lauderdale. Again, very, 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 very good news for Haiti and Haiti tourism. Um, so very happy. To be, to be talking about that today. Uh, you know, the tourism has, has been just suffering, suffering between pay lock, you know, level four, COVID. And so this is a very important win, man. I mean, you have no idea. I'm like, it's like, I don't know. It's the same sort of excitement that I, I you know, when you watch a, a finals and your team wins, I'm like, yes, finally, you're catching a break, right? I'm, I feel like I can't, I can't stress it enough how happy this makes me. I'm serious. You know, I mean, for folks to understand, I'm Team Haiti, man. You know, and I'm for anything, anything from anyone that improves us further, right? And and though, and though I am not necessarily a Spirits airline flyer, though, now when I had to fly back to in, 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 uh, to, to Haiti in July after you know being locked out the country um, for so many months, for the first time, I actually booked the flight to uh, using. Spirit, because JetBlue, which is my preferred go-to, was so expensive. One way was like $400. You know, it was insane. And so I booked out on Spirit. And actually, I lucked out because, you know, after, because, you know, the, the uh, uh, advertise rate was $45. <laughs> you guys laugh at this because, you know, there was no Spirit. That's laughable. Because the actual, what I ended up paying was about $120. But still, when you compare $120 to $400, yes, score. And secondly, I actually got, you know, that $120, not only did get me a second bag, but it also got me. Um, yeah, this is a one way flight, it was from Fort Lauderdale to um, Port au Prince. Uh, it got me nice seats, the front, front seats of, of JetBlue, which I must tell you, it is the best, you know, extra, you know, space seats I've ever sat in, right? Whatever you can critique uh, Spirit about, the, those seats that you pay a little extra for. Man, they, they put JetBlue's extra seats to shame, right? And uh, it's probably more comparable to America's first first class um, section. But even then, I, last time I was in American Airlines, like, I don't even remember um, them having uh, a first class section. I don't think not every plane has first class for American Airlines. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. That spirit. Um, and again, I'm very happy. Very happy to have um, uh, uh, Spirit uh, in Haiti, right? And let's go ahead and uh, let's hide block user. And you have a good day, Q Speak Z. Sorry, buddy, no spamming in the chat. You have a, a good life. Uh, you are permanently blocked from uh, chatting. Of course, our discourse is open to CJT, but. We don't do spamming here, right? We want space for people to be able to talk, actually have a conversation. Uh, I don't have to agree with the conversation, but you will be banned if you spam in the chat. Goodbye and good day. Uh, next, the next news story has to do with electricity. 
bear with me, guys. <clears throat> Bear with me. <clears throat> next new story has to do with electricity. Uh, the next new story has to do with electricity. We, uh, World Bank has approved $6.9 million, $6.9 million for renewable energy to fund renewable energy projects in Haiti. Uh, $2.9 million sourced um, from energy. Uh, will be sourced from energy sector management assistance program trust fund and the rest uh, is coming from the International Development Association, right? And it's part of a much larger um, uh, initiative uh, fund, you know, targeting about $9.2 million uh, to help with the climate fund uh, of the World Bank, right? Uh, and, and so this $6.9 million specifically is to go to fund activities that include the installation of solar panels, right? Uh, and uh, in energy storage batteries for sanitation, and water distribution infrastructure, right? Uh, again, funded activities uh, will include the installation of solar panels in Haiti, uh, energy storage batteries, and water distribution and infrastructure. That's what the 6.9 billion is gonna, be, gonna go for, right? Uh, additionally, uh, it's gonna go fund uh, a project uh, in Magazine uh, Ono, Duo, Duet, uh, there it is, Duet. Uh, there's a mini hydro power plant uh, being produced in, in, in Duet, for the way folks don't know, it's an Atibonita, Atibonita area. There's a mini hydro power plant that's supposed to be, be uh, supposed to be built, and that's going to be built with um, with uh, these funds, right? Um, um, okay, yeah, and that's and that is the new story as it relates to to that. I was happy to see um, that level of development. Additionally, uh, very interesting. This is interesting. Um, the GE power plant, for those who don't know, the GE power plant, um, that 55 megawatt uh, power plant that's supposed to be produced in Haiti to help uh, with our electricity situation, uh, 16.3 billion, uh, by the way, 200, so in effect, uh, which is equal to about $258 million. I'm going to say that again, $258 million for the GE power plant, 55 megawatts. So that's supposed to be a natural gas power plant, by the way. Uh, is going to come from Haitian banks. Uh, this this is going to be specifically, you know, you know, uh, provided and funded by Haitian banks, not the national treasury, not the, the not the Haitian government. The Haitian government, you know, you would think would say would spend, you know, as any national project would usually use, you know, tax funds, you know, and, and, and expend it. But uh, Haitian banks are going to give the Haitian government two hundred fifty million dollars, and the Haitian government. Is going to pay back over 10, 20, 30 plus years. And so uh, is that a good thing, a bad thing? Uh, we don't know the details to this deal. We don't know the interest rate being charged. We don't know if it's a slowly amortized um, uh, deal where we start small and go large. Ultimately, um, what's going to be very important here is, you know, who is oversight? Who is oversighting the this relationship? You know, obviously, this has to go to the court of uh, court of cassation or the court of the CS the CSC uh, CA. I hope I'm saying the acronyms right. It's basically the auditors, the auditors that review any government contract that Haiti gets into. They have to review that, and make sure everything's in order, right? But um, I don't know. Mixed mixed feelings about that. Uh, certainly, it's a very untraditional to have. Private banks, um, you know, so involved in a, a public, you know, venture in this way, uh, certainly it puts you know, pri these private banks on the hook, right? Uh, on the hook, right? Um, which is which is extremely. Um, I don't know. I don't know how to. We'll, we'll see. Time will. Information will come out about this. That will give us more context. So I don't want to lean in any one direction or another right but um you know uh we'll see very very untraditional uh to have the private sector uh so heavily involved in a public work which might be might be a good thing it might be an opportunity for um, these banks to uh, lend uh and really uh you know uh gain a degree of capital um, um that they can use, but but traditionally banks providing to governments 
have always been frowned upon, not only because of the default risk that exists, because, you know, it's the government. What are you going to do? <laughs> the government can say, yeah, we're, we're not going to pay. I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know what you're going to do about it. You're gonna, you're gonna, what you're going to do? You're going to go to war with me? You're a bank. You're a bank that is in my, you're my territory, right? I own your charter. If I, if I wake up tomorrow and say, your, your bank's out of business, I can do that. I'm the government, right? And so, you know, it, it's always, it's almost as if the fox is watching the hen house, so to speak, uh, which is why it's generally frowned upon. Um, so I guess we'll see how this turns out. Um, so much of Haiti, Haiti is a we'll see situation. So the final news story, guys, the final news story has to do with agriculture. I uh, always enjoy talking agriculture. One thing that was lost in the Kanye West being in Haiti, one thing that was lost in the Kanye West being in Haiti was the fact that we actually had a propagation center um, open. And so that when they, they did mention that uh, Kanye West was going to visit a, uh, a uh, plant propagation facility, uh, basically a seed and plant um, center that, that's focused on not only creating seeds for farmers, but also creating uh, forest you know, trees for replanting, right? Um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't necessarily appreciated that uh, this was a brand new facility. So we're kind of it's making this a separate news story outside of Kanye. Um, uh, this, by the way, this sits on this thing. It's this this thing, this facility sits on 4.5 acres. Uh, it's in Portope, right? And it's there to help uh, those local farmers um, uh, have seeds and etc. The um, um, other areas, this is the fourth, by the way, the other ones that have been open in Cap Penguin, uh, South of Okai, uh, Fond and Neg, and Malfranic, uh, over in the Gandas area. So as you can see, you know, each area has had a, a, a plant propagation center open up, which actually has been a promise that uh, Jovenel Moise uh, said he was going to do. He was going to open up these um, seed propagation centers and, and with the ultimate goal of helping drive uh, reforestation in the country. You know, a big issue, a big thing for him since becoming president has been the obvious issue of environmental degradation. And whatever you may feel about Piazza Ka and Jovenel Moise, again, we're not we're not for a particular party. We're not against any particular party. I'm for Haiti. My only the only party I'm for is the country of Haiti. And and it's it's a very it's very nice to see that um, uh, you know we're we're one step closer towards uh, being in a position to be able to reforest our country. As you know, uh, Haiti has only about 2.5%, right, of forestation, right? It's, it's very, very small, very, very small. And you can see that difference. If you've ever been in the Dominican Republic, you can see the amount of forestry that exists there. Haiti used to be that. Haiti, you know, what you see in Dominican Republic in terms of forestry, that was also Haiti. It was the same island. So it, that was Haiti. Right. And, and what you see now when you drive around so many places and you see barren hills, just know, you know, um, Christopher Columbus didn't find barren hills. Right. The Haitians who came here you know, initially didn't find barren hills. Right. It's, it's 200 plus years of, of bad policy you know, for different reasons. Right. For throughout um, most from 1804 through 1950, uh, most of that was due to the indemnity that we had. And the, and the quickest way to, to pay what we owed France was by cutting down our trees and, and, and selling them, and selling, you know, selling them to whoever, and then using that money to pay off the French, you know, um, the French debt, which was insane because we're basically paying the French to recognize the fact that we exist as a country, even though we would pay that already in blood. Right. But nonetheless, um, that's the situation for Haiti was in. And a big reason why, um, you know, um, so much trees were cut down for so long. And then the final nail of the coffin was Duvalier. Duvalier uh, really had no regard for the environment. In fact, he viewed the trees um, um, around Port-au-Prince particularly as a nuisance because um, too many people who were against him um, would hide in the hills. Um, and it would, very, it would be very difficult to, for, for him and the Makus to kill, right? You know, to, be, to be very clear, you know, Duvalier was a vicious, unremorseful, unremorseful dictator who openly, gleefully killed tens and th tens of thousands of Haitians uh, who went against him. 
and uh, force were viewed as places that people who were against him would hide. And it's very well known and well documented. He would he cut every single tree from Port-au-Prince to Dominican Republic along the Port-au-Prince Basin. Every single tree was cut down um, under uh, Duvalier's directive, right? And and of course, you know, the, the provinces weren't necessarily cleared out per his directive, but um, but certainly got no uh, no resources and no support because you know it, you know it, it didn't serve a dictator's interest to empower uh, places far away from Haiti that traditionally in Haiti Haitian history were always sources of uh, of uh, revolt. You know, the provinces were always a source of revolt. And so, uh, you know, Duvalier, you know, say what you want about Duvalier. Duvalier was a brilliant dictator. You know, he uh, understood the game very well and played it exceptionally well. We're talking about, we're talking about baby uh, Papa Doc. Uh, and he understood that since historically um, uh, presidents were overthrown from um, the provinces, he made a very clear point to make sure not to invest a penny in the provinces to keep them keep the provinces in absolute poverty and destitution, um, while he focused all power in Port-au-Prince. Right, and just you know, for example, all ports across the country were closed, and the only port that was allowed to exist was the port of Port-au-Prince because it was a lot easier to control the inflow and outflow of um, things. For example, guns that could be used against him um, if ever the port was closed. For example, right, which was a, which was. Devastating to so many critical ports across the country. Okai had a very long standing important port. Uh, Jeremy, in particular, had a very long standing important port. Uh, port Pe, I mean, port is in the name, uh, had a very long standing port in that area. And, uh, and all those things went to the wayside under, under his, his leadership. And the final nail in the coffin uh, for environmental was uh, really the 1990s. Um, the extreme, extreme, extreme. Um, uh, chaos that happened after the fall of Duvalier, um, and the and and really the mass migration of peoples from the provinces to the city, and, and the need for um, you know, things to cook and to make food, and that was driven and supplied by Shabo. In particular, since there was nothing else that one could do um, in terms of creating, in terms of um, excuse me, in terms of uh, uh, national product, there was nothing else that farmers could do, you know, they would just go over and cut down trees and, and make it to shabu, which is charcoal, for those who don't know, and, and sell them, you know, to the cities, right, charcoal production. And really, and you can say the really the most amount, the quickest amount of deforestation happened in the in the 90s right after Duvali fell, right? There's no government to stop them, to stop, you know, the, the you know, peasants and the, and the poor people from cutting down the trees. So we had three phases of distinct, constant, and consistent um, uh, deforestation that happened in Haiti uh, with, and with never any effort to reforest. And for example, in Jamaica, uh, one reason why Jamaica has not seen such aggressive deforestation is that um, not only did Jamaica very clearly make it illegal, Jamaica said, yo, we're not cutting down trees, people. Uh, and if you, you get, you're caught cutting down trees, you are going to jail. You're going to pay a fine and you're going to go to jail for a long time. That's number one. And number two, Jamaica did the very obvious thing. They gave poor people alternatives because poor people have to cook, right? And so you know, Jamaica heavily subsidized um, propane and alternatives for its people um, to make sure their people didn't have to cut down trees to, to cook for, for energy purposes, right? And that's the only way to attack you know, deforestation is to not only make it extremely illegal and enforce it by, you know, you're having a, you know, having a, your police, you know, look for people doing that and actually investigate and arrest people who are doing that. Um, but also, you know, make, make them very clear that you're, you're going to subsidize an alternative uh, that's going to be as cheap as what people are currently paying. Right. And so, um, so that's the situation that uh, heavily affected uh, deforestation. And then, so why it's so important that we have a propagation center happening uh, in the country, right? And that, my friends, is the final news story of Haiti Biz News. What did we talk about today? What did we talk about? We talked about the exchange rate. We talked about COVID. We talked about the new government budget. We talked about the you know, industry, the, the, 
passage of the CB, CBTA. We talk about travel and Spirit Airlines coming to Wakanda. We talk about electricity and the World Bank uh, uh, approving $6.9 million uh, for new renewable energies in Haiti. We talked about GE power plants and the, GE, the fact that the GE, GE power plants can be funded $258 million by Haitian private Haitian banks. And finally, we talked about the propagation plant in Haiti, right? And so uh, for those who came in for the, meat and the, for the meat and potatoes of the news, the class is over. <laughs> I know a lot of folks have messaged me, say, see, Gente, I, I want the news. I appreciate the way you deliver it. I, believe, I appreciate it in English. I, believe, I, I appreciate you providing it. In a, in a sensical way that, um, you know, just we try to keep it tet fouet with analysis, right? Not particularly opinionated for one way or another. I'm here for it. And, but then I got, I got, it's football season. It's Sunday. I got some things to do. So I got to go. And so those who are here for that, you guys can go. I appreciate you guys. And I hope to see you guys again uh, next Sunday at 11 a.m. ish, ish, we ish, <laughs> ish, I, ish, ish, around 11 a.m. Try to get back, get back on here. So what we're gonna do now for the for the for the for the last bit of our show today is I'm gonna go through the chat. You know, I, as I promise, it's a conversation we're having, and and the way I used to do, I used to kind of, you know, say the news, read the chat, say the news, read the chat. You know, but it's not effective. You know, and it's not really ideal to be mixing chat and news like that. So instead, um, what we do instead is um, we, we have, you know, I, I read some chat, I read some stuff beforehand, I read some stuff, and I read some stuff afterhand, and we keep the news all together consolidated, right? And so um, we're going to talk about, we're gonna, I'm going to read the chat, but before I do, I'm going to take a quick little break, and I've just been at it, we're on an hour and 40 minutes, 50 minutes. <laughs> Your brother needs a one minute break, right? I'm going to take a quick break, we're going to play the intro stuff. And then we're going to we're going to have a conversation. I'm going to go in the chats. I'm going to read what everybody wrote because I, I respect your time, guys. I respect that you guys spent almost two plus hours with me, and you guys a lot of you guys wrote uh, to me and, and to us. So I'm going to read the chats, right? But first, let me take a quick break. I'll be right back, and we're going to have our conversation. Okay, be right back, guys. It is news show Sunday, 11 a.m. We're here every Sunday, right? 11 a.m. You know, maybe, maybe it's a new show. It's uh, Sunday's weekly. This is CJT. It is a new show. We talk about news, current events uh, as it relates to macroeconomic condition. You can always catch us live uh, every Sunday. Right? Hey, it is a new show. We are on Facebook. We're on YouTube. And we are on Instagram. You can always catch us uh, 11 a.m. Uh, on Sundays. We are live on air. We're going to be talking weekly happenings, focused, economically focused on what has happened. And we're going to dissect it in an unbiased, impartial way. And a big part of what we do here, of course, is Haiti Business Show. You know, I, I did not see and do not see any place online where uh, folks can get uh, a CNBC, Bloomberg like focus on what's going on you know, at, at the macroeconomic level. Boom, we're back. We're back. And those who are still on the stream, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys. I'm scrolling all the way to the tip top. I'm not sure if I'm going to get everyone that had typed originally, um, because I think this my, my uh, chat history only goes up. It goes, it's only going up to about 1242, guys. It's only going up to about 1242. So anyone who chatted before, I do apologize. I am not seeing that in my in my options here. So I do apologize. Right. So uh, we got Shining Shin, Pierre. What's up? And for some, I'm seeing Shining Pierre in the in the in the chat. What's up, man? Uh, he was commenting there. Uh, Jay Cade, I think I said what's up to you. Ready? What's up? Hey, happy to have you. We got Andre Desire. What's up? What's up? Happy to have you. Uh, let's scroll down. Let's see what. Um, I think Music Lover Two was saying something like, "Feels like we're slaves." I think I think uh, Music Lover was referring to when I was talking about the asking permission for our budget. I think that's what he was referring to. Yep, I see some other folks talking about IMF. 
So that was that that point of the news story. Um, um, so Shane Pierce says, ask, what is the IMF? The IMF is the International Monetary Fund. Um, it is a fund that is um, uh, you know, structured. Uh, it's a how do I how do I how do I want to best explain this? Um, it's a it's an in effect uh, international organization, but it's very influenced by the United States. Uh, and their mission is to, in effect, uh, be a helping hand to governments. And a lot of governments who aren't who aren't um, structurally sound, uh, they're supposed to come in and and basically uh, be the big brother and, and help them uh, uh, structure their governments and structure their economies in ways that are going to help the free market. Um, work better in their countries. Uh, and though there's been a case or two where the IMF has actually come in and done a pretty good job, um, I think probably most likely is the, most notably, I believe, you know what, I don't, I know there's one or two. <laughs> my, my mind isn't coming up with the specific one or two, <laughs> right? But there's equally been as many places that the IMF has done a very poor job in, in, in helping. And in fact, the IMF has hurt economies um, as aggressively as they've helped some economies, right? And, and IMF in particular <coughs> has been a source of conspiracy theorists um, saying that they're nothing more but a, a U.S. Hegemon, hegemonic entity um, bent on keeping certain countries and peoples down. Um, I'm not here to espouse those perspectives. Um, I'll be honest, I'm not sure if I believe there's that much maliciousness, um, intentional that happens. But certainly um, developing countries do have a, um, uh, experimentalness to them that uh, IMF uh, executes um, certain programs in these countries that uh, may not exist in their home countries, right? Uh, and there's a guinea pigness to developing countries, um, and to, to the point where, for example, it was, it was the IMF that pushed absolute liberalism uh, on Haiti, for example, right? But yet we've we've seen how absolute liberalism has affected Haiti. You know, no national production, everything's imported, right? Um, and you know, domestic rice is gone, um, and there's been a major impact of that sort of aggressive liberalism that IMF for a long time pushed. Right, you know, uh, and so certainly you can say that um, from that perspective, the IMF messed up. Right, so that's what the IMF is. Right, that's what the IMF is. Thanks for that. Actually, that question, Champ here. Um, interestingly, uh, Kruger, what's up, Kruger? What's up? I'm seeing in the chat. What's up, man? Uh, saying uh, the Haitian good was the same as Japanese yen yesterday. That's interesting. Chevy fan, what's up? Uh, happy to happy to have first time I've seen Chevy fan in the chat. Chevy, Chevy fan says. No blue is not good for the Haitian citizens. Things will get more expensive. And responding to someone in the chat. Right? Andre Desir says, the stability of the economy has always been the problem. You're absolutely right. Instability is the devil of, 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 um, of, uh, of everything when it comes to Haiti. Uh, Haiti budget is, uh, Blue Mountain says, the Haiti budget is less than the earnings of one company in the U.S. It's ridiculous. J.C. Penney earned $12 billion a year. A year, a year at its worst, uh, he, he says, uh, the, the greedy bourgeoisie has the country producing less than one American company. And that's one thing I do never really um, agree with. There's, there's not, it's not simply the bourgeoisie. It's not, I wish it was that simple, right? I wish it was that simple, right? There's a, 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 a very nice, like, it's, like a, it's, like, it's like a nice bedtime story. You know, the world's so simple. You know, that oh, it's just it's just the damn bourgeoisie. And if we get the bourgeoisie out, you know, Haiti would be cotton candy and honey and, and Oreos. and We'd be all happy in Kumbaya. It's not it's not that simple. Right. Um, uh, I've met uh, business people from a lot of backgrounds, Haitian Americans who've come in. And, and then and also I've met business owners who come from some of these, quote unquote, big families. And one thing I, I've, I've come to let, be left with, both from Haitian Americans and, and those who have been in the country doing business, 
uh, industry in the country for a very long time, meeting these people, is that there's very little difference in many of them in what they, in what they say and what they espouse. Um, they're in the country. They want the country to be better than what it is. And, and, but there isn't incentive put in place for them to go in the direction of real industry, right? Because the, the same instability that you face trying to operate a little hustle is the same instability they would face. But understand that they would have invested tens of millions, hundreds of millions, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars in enterprise that would only be burnt next, next month or the next crisis, right? And not even the crisis is that's the concern, is that the Haitian government doesn't do anything to only support them, but worse, the Haitian government does things to undermine their investments. I give you an example. Uh, Prinsa, P-R, I'm sure I'm saying it wrong, by the way, P-R-I-N-S-A, P-R-I-N-S-A was a major ch uh, chicken producer in Haiti, right? Founded by one of these bourgeoisie that you guys hate, love to hate. Oh, it's bourgeoisie, Arr! right? But it was a family that did the right thing in the, in the 90s, right? And invested as a lot of money into making a very impressive chicken farm operation in the country, right? The Haitian government, instead of supporting domestic business, right? And doing things not only to incentivize their growth and helping them um, achieve greater gains. I mean, thousands of people were employed at this chicken farm. What did they do? They instead lowered tariffs, right? And allowed American chickens to flood the market, right? And it's not necessarily anything wrong with allowing, you know, other competitors to come in and make up, you know, um, production. I mean, right now we're, we're looking at for chicken, chicken for production consumption around a hundred, um, uh, a hundred, um, let me actually let me look at this. Let me, I'm gonna give you the exact figures in just a moment. I'm gonna give you the exact figures in just a moment. Okay, there it is. I just want to make sure I'm saying the right figures. Uh, we have 105, 105,000 metric tons of chicken consumed in the country, and we only produce 5,000 metric tons of chicken. I'm gonna say that again. 105 versus five. 105 versus five. Right, and, and at the time, it was a lot more. We produced a lot more of our chickens domestically in the country, right? But when the Haitian government kowtowed and, and said, okay, American chicken farmers, come on and bring your food here, and then gradually, and there's ways to go about it. For example, gradually lowering the tariff, right? To allow domestic chicken farmers to improve their processes, you know, figure out ways to cut costs, figure out ways to adapt, figure out ways to bring in experts to help them with their processes. When you have a Haitian government that doesn't perhaps directly subsidize, because again, understand, the American government directly subsidizes every single agriculture industry in, in America, right? <clears throat> directly, you know, they have a soybeans, heavily subsidized product, for example, right? So imagine you watching this right now, spent hundreds of millions of dollars of your fortune only for next year for the Haitian government to say, yeah, we're going to allow, you know, you, you say, say you, 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 you create, you start a balloon making factory. And then next, next year, the Haitian government says, yeah, we're, we're going to allow, you know, Dominican Republic and Jamaica and, and all these, well, not Jamaica, the Dominican Republic and America and Canada, we're going to allow them to sell balloons at half the rate. This is, this is the situation, guys. This is the situation, right? And so as much you know, and, and I'm not saying also saying lots of the bourgeoisie is, is their, their hands are clean. I'm not saying that at all, right? There's bad people in everything. There's bad poor people. There's bad rich people. There's bad middle class people, right? I'm not I'm not saying that's not the case, <clears throat> but I just want you to understand that, right? The reality is, per the conversations I've, I've I've been fortunate to have, right, with many of these people, is that, you know, they would love to invest and become true industrialists. But Haiti doesn't provide them the structure, the security, and, and it didn't, doesn't make sense for them to put their money at risk when tomorrow they'll wake up and the Haitian government has kowtowed 
and allowed uh, a big foreign producer to come in at no tariff and, and, and flood the market and they're out of business, right? So I need you to understand the complexity, guys. Blue Mountain, it's, it's not, you know, it's not as simple as what you want to say it is. I need you to recognize that. I need everyone to recognize that watching my stream, right? Whatever you think is a simple story is not, right? I know we like simple, simple stories of winners and losers and fairy tales. And it's not, it, makes, it makes us go to bed easy to know there's just one boogeyman that, that's the problem with who beat this. Sorry, the reality is there's a much more structural issue that's many layers, right? Um, that needs to be looked at, it needs to be considered, it needs to be properly attacked. Because when you understand the situation at whole, you can you can change it, right? And if, you're, and if your conversation point is only <clears throat> the bourgeoisie is the problem, and you understand that, you know, there's other bigger elements in play here. You're not, you're never, for example, in America, listen, it's not that America has corporations that are particularly, they care about people in America. It's just that the tax incentives are, are, are set up in America to where uh, investment and uh, investment, internal investment is incentivized, right? And, and certain things are done by local state governments to incentivize companies to come in and provide jobs, right? Natively, right? And, and that is part of, right? That is a big part of um, why it seems as if you know, American corporations uh, are more focused on good. But really, it's just that the American government incentivizes certain behaviors for these large institutions to do, right? So that's, that's the main thing. I just want to, let me get off that topic now, but I just need you guys to understand that. It's just, it's just much more complicated than, than as simple as what Blue Mountain tried to say, okay? Music lover explained the IMF. Thank you for that. Thank you. I appreciate that. And Blue Mountain says, uh, our remittance is basic finance. Um, we must organize. And uh, I certainly agree. I certainly, I certainly agree with you. I certainly agree with you. By the way, you guys doubt I'm in a <laughs> tropical climate. If you ever see me bend down and, and clap, that's a mosquito I just killed. <laughs> it's buying the crap out of me, right? Uh, so with us, let's, let's, keep, let's keep on reading. Um, yeah, I agree with you, but Blue Mountain, I agree, Blue Mountain says that we need, we in the diaspora need to um, organize. Um, certainly, we need to organize independently of this bourgeoisie boogeyman that you're, that, you're, that you're trying to prop up. The diaspora do need to organize and do need to, um, you know, move in a way that's smarter and, and better, right? So I certainly agree. And to that end, I do have a project coming up next year that I, I really look forward to talking about more full time. Those who watched my past episode already know what it is. Um, and, I, and as I said in that past episode, I wasn't gonna say it again until it became official. Um, but, but certainly I am of that mindset and I'm gonna start acting on that necessity uh, coming very soon. So thank you for that Blue Martin, Blue Martin, Blue Mountain, All right? A lot of conversations with Blue Mountain here. I, I love it. A lot of folks back and forth in the chat. I love it. I appreciate that. Good stuff, good stuff. Right. Uh, most music lovers ask, hey, most people hate Spirit Airlines, so good news or bad news? <laughs> That's good news because as much as, you know, Spirit Airlines has, a, it's very easy to rat on Spirit Airlines. Um, you know, uh, they're frequented quite a bit. Um, and they're a major airline that um, uh, provides convenience and, 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 and bluntly speaking, there is no other major airline flying into, I mean, listen, the day that Southwest Airlines starts flying to Haiti, and I think Southwest does fly the Dominican Republic, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, you know, Southwest starts flying into to Haiti, yes, oh my God, ah, like my team won a, my, they hate my, my football team, you know, won, I would be so happy, right, you know, the day that a Delta, for example, decides to start flying back, Big fan of Delta and their customer service. I'll be happy. You know, starts flying back, starts flying specifically to Cap Ice, and I'll be happy. But for now, you got to take a weekend. And and you know what? This night I flew Spirit for the first time in years. You know, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I'll be honest with you. You know, I paid for those extra comfort, comfortable seats. I knew what I, I knew what I, I signed up for. You know, 
I, I didn't I didn't mess with the flight attendants. I stayed away from them because you know they don't treat you like human beings. <laughs> they, they get annoyed. Like, what do you want, sir? What do you want? <laughs> so I didn't talk to no flight attendants. I took my seat. I I, I flew for an hour and a half. I got out my seat and I left because <laughs> I. You don't fly spirit for customer service. You fly it because you got some place to go and you don't want to spend a lot of money. That's the spirit slogan. <laughs> and so if you understand what spirit airlines is, it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. I'm just happy that we have a direct major flyer in and out of Port au Prince. Right? I have some friends who, uh, what they were having to do was they had to fly to Port au Prince and then had to pay another plane ticket, like 300 plus dollars to, to go on um, um, Sunrise and from, um, from Port-au-Prince and then fly to um, Ocon, right? And that price ticket, plane ticket was as much as a round trip, like it's 300 bucks just to fly 20 minutes from Port-au-Prince. You know, I, I'm, you know, that's I'm the first one about inconvenience and supporting local business, but Sunrise Airways, goodness gracious, $300 to fly 20 minutes? <laughs> I get it. It's expensive. Haiti is an expensive place to do business. I get it. I'm not critiquing you. Yeah. Respect the spirit of sunrise. I'm just saying, I'm looking at my pocketbook and I'm just saying, if I already had to pay X amount of dollars to fly into Port au Prince, and now you're telling me I got to pay that same plane ticket to fly from Port au Prince to OCOT, man, listen, I'm happy spirit exists and people can fly directly, you know, and pay a fraction of that price. <laughs> Straight up. <laughs> All right. Um, let's see what else we got here. Um, no, str no, no strand av. I certainly agree with you. Uh, we do need Haitian diaspora investors, and uh, we need to absolutely need to stop talking about it. And we need to be about it. I, I a thousand percent agree with you. No strand. I a thousand percent agree with you. Sure. Right. You got to bridge the gap. You know, kill the bad stigma of using not using credit. Uh, we get millions of dollars to, of funds and invest in Haiti and allow the diaspora to buy homes in Haiti. You know, so No Strand wrote that there, and I, 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 I agree with you, No Strand. I agree. Um, you know, we have to be, you know, start talking about it, be about it. I agree, and certainly uh, what we do here on Haiti Biz News, it's about those perspectives, um, things. Uh, the book I have coming out, um, by the way, uh, 101 Ways to Do Business in Haiti. Um, uh, it's we've been making incredible progress. The reason why, I, you know. I go a little more quicker now, even though we're still doing about two hours or so per show. Uh, it says that I can, I can, I can uh, work on the book. The reason why I try to spend so little time on Sundays to do, you know, I don't try to keep Sunday a writing day, you know, so I can really chip away at, at, at the book. And by the way, let me copy and paste the title of the book for you guys, right? And so No Strand, that's one reason why I'm working on this book. This book is, is supposed to help from my perspective. We do talk about not just the ideas, but we talk about things related to registering your business. Uh, we talk about things related to financing and credit uh, in the book and uh, a lot of different things as relates to, um, uh, you know, being maximizing your chance for success. Because as you know, there's no 100% when it comes to doing business anywhere in the world. But certainly it's about, you know, what can we do, what ideas exist, and then and how can we execute those ideas. And so, um, so again, we're, we're certainly before the end of the year, that book will be out, I promise you, and uh, that can add to it. And then from there, starting next year, I am going to be much more uh, aggressively um, working to galvanize uh, action. So, you think, so the guide is here, and now, and now you know, 2021 is, is the year of action. And how many of us in the diaspora, can, what can we do to start working together amongst ourselves to, to start executing real projects, real projects that can impact employment, economy and, and straight up we can make a little bit of money because <laughs> that's what hey that's what capitalism is all about <laughs> let's make it let's make it a win-win i call it social capitalism right we, we keep the social the people first but also we make a little bit of money <laughs> right and make it a win-win for everyone involved right let's see what else we got folks saying here uh, good to have you in the chat as always brother uh, he says, in the country, as sunny as Haiti, I always shock that I see how much solar panels. I, you know, listen, solar panels have been up tremendously uh, recently because of uh, the amount of lack of electricity um, due to uh, the rehabbing that uh, the governor was doing. Um, and so I, 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 I think I, I, I'm pretty sure it's going to be interesting when the Haitian government comes back online 
um, just how much of um, uh, how much of how many people are actually gonna be using it. Because I, I know for sure I've gotten solar panels from my apartment, for example. I didn't have solar panels before because I had batteries, but because of that, we, had, we went months, literally a month with our electricity. I was like, oh, I, I need to just bite the bullet and just buy me a couple of solar panels. And so technically I don't even need state electricity anymore, both my office and personally speaking, right? So great, great, uh, great comments there. Uh, Peter, Peter J. Tenna, uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, you have, you have to, Peter J. asked for, should, can, can, to be a moderator. Um, I'm not, not sure what you'd be doing as a moderator. And generally, yeah, I mean, I'm, most of you guys are very respectful. I, I literally go weeks without ever having to block anyone um, because of spamming. You know, beyond that, I don't, I don't really care what you write. I don't have to agree with you. Um, I, don't, I don't need a moderator. I don't think I need a moderator. You know, if I do see somebody, see somebody spamming, I'll stop what I'm doing now. I'll, I'll just block it really quick. <laughs> so it's no big deal. So I don't think I need a moderator, but thank you for, thank you for offering. I appreciate it. My Liberté Financière says um, people in Haiti are also spreading fear. Uh, whenever something happened in Haiti, they, they go out and they spread it. I, I agree with you. I think uh, uh, no other race of people I, I've met um, really go out their way to um, share themselves the worst images of Haiti. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, I really don't know of any other group of people who, who do that. I don't see Jamaicans doing it. I don't see Dominicans doing it. Um, I don't see Colombians doing. I don't see you know. I don't see people going out their way and, and just you know, re regurgitating the negative that's happening. I mean, it's, it happens. I'm not saying you should hide that, but much like you know, I was, I, was, I say this analogy. It's it's you know when you're when you're when your family is acting up, you know, um, you know you're having your beefing with your brother or your sister. You keep it in house. You beef with them, right? You know, you don't hide what's happening unless amongst those concern but you don't you don't put that business out you know it's family business you know and so um so but you're right i certainly agree uh, you know the, the biggest source of negativeness when it comes to haiti is other haitians and it's something that um it's, it's mind-blowing to me it's absolutely mind-blowing we have our problems but i mean there's there's haitians that really almost as if they take they take it's fun for them right to go out their way or it's this is it's a sense of Inflictive abuse, where every status update is, is something negative about the Haitian government or that, that, about Haiti. You know, feel free, the Haitian government should be criticized, but how about Haiti as a whole, about the people and everything? And it's, I, I don't understand it. Um, I come from a place of, you know, working to, to improve the narrative and improving the situation myself. I don't, I don't, I'm not, I'm not here to wait for things to change. I'm here to be part of the change. And for folks to, I can't, I can't, I can't understand the mindset of someone who day in, day out, that's all they post, you know, and they do nothing beyond posting, you know, to each their own. I don't get it. Uh, and I don't want to get it. <laughs> um, let's see what uh, Shanae Pierre goes. I've always said that, um, let me something so big, bad time, chilling. Okay. All right. All right. I think we, I think the um, conversation is back and forth here. Notre Dame says, um, would it come to Haiti for fun just to handle business and power so we can uh, peaceful uh, live with education, not to worry about Taiwan? I, I mean, yeah, it's, I, I get it. That's, that's your perspective, no strategy. You don't have to come for fun, but business, business isn't for everyone, right? You know, and a lot of folks, business, they shouldn't be in business, right? Um, and honestly, spending your dollars in Haiti um, is almost as important because when you're spending your dollars, you're, what, are you, what are you doing? You're empowering another entrepreneur. Right, a business owner, right? You're empowering that person to continue being in business when you come to Haiti and you spend your dollars, right? And so, you know, in lieu of being a business owner yourself, you know, coming to Haiti to spend your dollars, you're empowering another business owner. And so, um, I, 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 it's perfectly fine to come to Haiti for fun, you know, because you're helping the economy nonetheless. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. Mm. Adam Narcisse, what's up, Adam? What's up, bro? Adam says, I'm from Leogan, uh, Laguanav, excuse me, 250,000 people, and we have six police officers. Is that true? Oh, those stats seem a little off. <laughs> I mean, I don't, it's not that I, I don't completely believe it. I, maybe it's 20, maybe it's 30. 
Maybe it's 40. I can't believe it's six. <laughs> that, that, not that there's a big difference between six and 40 vis-a-vis -vis 250,000 people. But uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, can't, I can't believe it's that low. You know, uh, give me a little more. Give me a dozen. <laughs> I laugh, but um, it's really, it's really the, the ratio of police to people, it is very low in Haiti, for sure. Um, let's see what else we got here. Mm, uh, Lake Enrique, Dominican Republic, full of trees. I agree. Certainly a problem. We no longer talk real force on the government subsidizing gas and gas stoves, the whole population. We've been planting trees forever. I agree. I agree with you. You know, si la me si a te. You told, I told you, I totally agree with you, um, uh, music lover. Uh, Evel XS shows up. Hey, how can we talk about deforestation and not talk about the United States and not talk about it in the United States Midwest to West? Uh, I don't understand what that question is. I, I thought, you know, the plains of America, the plains of America never had forests, but Haiti was a tropical country that has had its trees cut down. So I'm not, I, don't, I don't see the analogy there. Uh, Evel, sorry about that. Um, uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, LF says, uh, they don't, definitely do not like praise of Duvalier. Uh, Hanif Martin says, the government is holding the country back. They don't care about the people. They only care about their pockets. You know, um, it's hard to say otherwise. You know, um, when you see that parliament had power to change the country, but passed no laws over years. Over five years, they passed five laws. Five years, five laws. So that's a law. That's a bill a year. And meanwhile, they're their most expensive paid um, product in the country. So it's hard to. It's hard to. As much as I, I would like to argue a fair and balanced point, it's just hard. It's hard to. <laughs> um, let's see. Lots of comments, and I love it. I appreciate the comments. Philip Charles adds that uh, Jock Mail also was a port. Uh, that was very important. Thank you, Philip, Philip for that. Uh, let's see what else we got here. I've seen a new business in Haiti building better cooking stoves and that use propane. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. I know uh, I have a good, a good friend and associate of mine who um, uh, D and E Energy actually has propane. Sorry, um, uh, very efficient Chabon stoves, and uh, which use as much as as little as fifty percent of the Chabon needed. It burns more effectively and longer. And, uh, and certainly if, if folks are going to use Shabo anyways, um, it, it's, it's best to maybe um, do it efficiently, right? So that's one, one example, right? And then, of course, there are, you know, um, propane, et cetera. But, but there's an issue um, amongst propane, amongst the, the general population. The general population, uh, there is a fear of propane. There's a misunderstanding of propane. Because think about it. Think about what propane is. It's a gas that burns. <laughs> and a lot of a lot of Haitians look at that like, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. You're telling me to lug a, 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 a container of gas that can burn uh, around and that's going to be safe, right? Um, so we get it. So there is a there is a preference for, for Shabo. And if there is a preference anyways, um, it would be, while we wait for the government to properly incentivize um, the industry, you know, we might as well do things like I uh, use one that is uh, uh, more efficient, right? at least especially more efficient. Things happen. So, I, so I, I get that. I get that. Uh, Karami uh, Persenzu per says, uh, uh, says, good job, Mr. Genty. Uh, keep it up. Hopefully uh, people will watch the show and learn something. I certainly hope so as well. Lucien Moussoua says, uh, thank you. Uh, um, Adrian just told me, good bonsoir. I'm not sure Marlene's still here, but Bonsoir, if you left around uh, the time when I was finishing the lot uh, or, you know, breaking up the news story. Uh, Sheriff here says, appreciates the way I tell the news. Uh, some, some, some football fans, uh, you know, it's, it's to say they appreciate <laughs> being let go. Uh, so that you're watching football. I feel you. I feel you. Um, let me scroll up a little bit and see what folks are saying. Uh, let's see. Got to scroll up. I gotta keep scrolling up. Gotta keep scrolling up. Gotta keep scrolling up. 
Sometimes this thing automatically drops me to the bottom of the list and I got to refine where I was. Okay, there it is, there it is. Got some folks saying go heat. Um, Jay Kate says, is it possible to renovate rail transportation in Haiti? Um, no. <laughs> that, that, that is not going to be part of the one-on-one ideas. Um, there's too many, too many factors. Uh, the biggest one is, is, um, is land rights, right? Because to be able to do a rail transportation, you need, um, it's, it's very, you know, that's why it, it, it just about failed the first time uh, when they tried to do it in 1900s uh, to 1930s. Um, land rights became a very sticky issue and you had a lot of Haitians who lost a lot of land and became very angry because of the land they lost. And uh, over time, um, a lot of vandalism and a lot of different things that happened. Because again, there, there's no police, there's no law enforcement to stop someone from just, okay, well, there's some tracks over here. I'll just take out the tracks and I'll burn it for metal and just sell it. You know, um, it's one reason why you see, there's so many issues where you have metal plates in the street, like the little metal sewage plates, they don't exist in Haiti because people will just take them out and take the metal and there's no enforcement and there's no replacement either, right? Uh, so no, so I, I wouldn't, I don't, I don't see rail transportation. It's been tried, it, it failed um, just because of the incredible costs and the issues as it relates to land rights. You know, one of the nicest things on the, on the planet in Haiti is land. Um, and, and that's the biggest obstacle you're gonna find uh, when it comes to rail transportation, right? So I don't see that happening anytime soon without, without land reform. If, if there's a massive land reform, I think I think we may we may see a change. Okay. Uh, see, Jenty, I've not been in Haiti since 1988. How would I go about navigating Haiti? You know, simple as uh, you know, book a book a book a weekend at the Cameroon, book a weekend at Wahoo Bay Beach, book a weekend at Kinam Hotel, book a weekend at Marriott. Um, they'll, they'll come pick you up at the airport. Each of them have they have shuttles. You know, you, you call them ahead. You organize that ahead. They they have a show that picks you up. Drops you at the resort, and you have a good time, and you slowly readjust yourself uh, with the culture and the country, slowly but surely. Um, but you go in, you have a good time. Right? That's that's really as simple as it, it it needs to be. You know, you book yourself at a nice resort, and now you're spending money in the country. You're you're helping provide Haitian jobs and Haitian opportunities to Haitians in the country. And and and, and, and you're not going to Jamaica or Dominican Republic. They're not enjoying the fruits of, of your of your hard work your countrymen are right so uh, that, that would be my my response to you brother just just you know i have to then it's not as complicated as you know doing business in the country or charity just come and spend your money here and of course as i mentioned in the top of the hour um you know looking for haitian products made in haiti products uh doesn't doesn't cost a plane ticket but you're helping support haiti and haitian jobs and haitian economy by going out your way to buy haitian made in haiti products right cool 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 okay um, some conversations happening in there. Some patient kind of some conversations happening in there, back and forth amongst you guys. I love it. I love it. Um, so some of the Haitian governments, some of the Haitian governments are working on supporting things outside in, in kill national production. Yep, 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 yep. We talked about that, music lover. You're absolutely right. Uh, Meyer St. James says, uh, somebody mentioned about Asians planning <laughs> to conquer their Caribbean. Uh, it's sad to uh, see how our sisters and countries are failing to the death trap. I don't know, Meyer. I, I always hear, I hear people, you know, the people who, who write this stuff, like my, what Meyer just wrote, um, aren't the people in these countries. Like, I, I've, I've, I've had opportunity to speak to many Jamaicans. And while you are lamenting about this, Chinese enemy and the Jamaicans, they have a world standard highway that connects, you know, three important cities in their country, right? And they're seeing incredible benefits for, for locals who are able to commute back and forth to these places now. And they're seeing incredible benefits um, between, um, you know, tourists. Tourists are being able to use it now um, and they are seeing genuine improvements in their economic situation because of it. And, and everywhere I've actually had a chance to speak to people about the projects that are being done by the Chinese, they have nothing to say. I mean, nothing but negative to say. And so it's easy for you, who's not in the country, who's just an academic, I guess, you know, just, oh, man, 
I'm reading stuff and I'm seeing it's not good for the China. The Chinese are coming to take to take it over. But actually go speak to a Jamaican. Go speak to a Jamaican. Speak to 10, right? Then speak to 10 Jamaicans and see what eight out of 10 tell you. Eight out of 10 that I've spoken to have actually come on the live, you know. If there's any Jamaicans on still on the live, please you know, voice your perspective. You know, how is the highway project? Is has it been a positive thing? And when I ask them, they say yes, it's been a very positive thing. Yes, it's expensive, and yes, it's you know a little pricey, but we're seeing the benefit, and the benefit outweighs this cost. And that's what they're telling you. Right? So I got I don't know. I don't know. Um, I go 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 speak with some Jamaicans and, and uh, you, you tell me what they tell you. And if the majority are telling you it's a negative thing, maybe it is, right? But I, I prefer to ask the people living in the condition to, to tell me about it rather than someone who's outside just just thinking about stuff, right? Uh, Peter J says, but you have to admit the Haitian elites could do more to, to punch the country or push the country forward. You see them in social media saying how much they love Haiti, but they don't invest in projects that will benefit them. It's not, you know, listen, man, you know, Listen, uh, business is business. Business doesn't have fidelity. You know, it doesn't have nationalism. To be honest with you, like, you know, any talk to anybody in the country who's doing business here, and and they'll tell you, business Haiti isn't necessarily rational. It's an emotional thing, right? And and though I push it, you know, and I push it doing smartly. To, do, to try to do it as rational as possible. Given the difficulties that the Haitian government puts in front of you, it is actually a very irrational thing to do. I want to be very clear. Right? And so I don't fault them. I don't fault anyone not to do business in Haiti. I don't. I want to make it very clear, Peter J. I, my job is not to convince anyone to come to Haiti to do business period either. Period. Right? I make that very clear. My, my responsibility is for, for folks who decide on their own, for whatever their reasons are, how do I help? You know, how can I provide information to maximize their chance of success? Right? But I'm not, it's not here, it's not my job to convince anyone. And in fact, when you sit down and look at the facts when it comes to how difficult it is to do business in the country, you know, the facts will tell you not to do it, right? And I'm a very factual person. And I wouldn't hide those facts and I don't hide the facts. Right. And so, no, I am not going to put a demand on a business class of people to do to do industrial style business when the Haitian government doesn't support them in any any way possible. They don't. And, and we have to remove this idealism of, of, of what business could be in Haiti and, and, and move towards the what business really is in the real world. And in the real world, governments put incentives in place for the, their domestic business class to do the right things in their countries, right? The Haitian government doesn't do it. They don't do it. And believe me when I say this, Peter J, when I have these conversations with people from all different backgrounds from the business climate in the country, they all say they want to do more. They want to invest more. They want to do more in the country, but they can't. Their arms are tied. And I get it. I'm in the country. I'm running businesses in the country. I'm, I just told you overnight, 50% of my salary base for my employees doubled. Doubled. Come on, man. Come on. Right? That, that, and that's and strictly because of a Haitian government doing things without regard to the business community. Period. There's no regard. You don't see a government like, well, we probably need to do it gradually. We need to do it and let them and let the business community know, hey, we're going to be moving this gradually, right? Just plan accordingly. None of that. They just well, we woke up one day and we saw that we're at 120, and now three weeks later we're at 60. Come on, man. Come on. Right. And so no, Peter, no. You know, I'm sorry. You, I don't know if you run any businesses, Peter. I don't. I don't know how. What your background is, Peter John, I'm not going to put any assumptions on you, but I can tell you, if you run businesses here in Haiti, um, uh, 
you know, it's, 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 it's hard to do structural investment here. When you have a Haitian government around every corner, every level goes against you and what you're trying to do. I'm sorry. Music lover, let's see. Um, they don't think they don't think long term. Uh, they feel like if they don't do it uh, in their circle, da, da, da. Yeah, I, I agree with you for sure, music lover. Um, let's see, Jamaica has already given up their report, one of their reports. Nigeria has used Chinese to become a chief, I heard. Uh, although a community, you know, remember, Nigeria isn't a single country. It's It's a lot of many, 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 many um, what do you call that? Um, uh, tribes and one tribe did one thing. <laughs> That's not Nigeria doing one thing. Okay. Let's be very clear. <laughs> so, um, I don't know, man, I, I'm seeing a lot of critiques of, of China and et cetera. I, I just, when I talk to people on the ground, right, they, they tell me they appreciate the development in their country. Right. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm just saying when you talk to the Jamaican, you, you get a different perspective. That's all I'm saying. Arlene says, yeah, Arlene basically sums up that, you know, um, you know given a, a very unstable and continuously difficult country, how can you do it? How can you invest your, your hard earned money? And again, that's why I don't, I'm not here to convince you to do business. I'm just here, once you've decided to do business in Haiti, here's how you do it, right? And you do it in a way that you, you put instability part of your game plan. And you can save money uh, and, and you, don't, you don't go out and just buy, you don't splurge, you know, you, you keep a higher amount of money in reserve. For when things are difficult, you can draw that, those, those funds, right? Um, you, in, and when you can, you invest in infrastructure that allows you to weather for example, I know people in the BPO sector, and they they built they built out dormitories for the employees so they can sleep on site and still do their jobs because the, you know when the instability happens and employees can't come to work, they will, they will lose their contracts and be out of business. And so it's really you know Haiti is really a game of uh, adaptation. And, and I know the folks who are here, despite the business owners who are here, despite the difficulties, you know they they have there's a bit of. Um, revel in the challenge of doing business here, right? Because, you know, doing business in Haiti is the big leagues. Anybody can do business in America. You know, you close your eyes, you're doing business in America, you're doing fine. But, you know, the big leagues is Haiti. <laughs> you know, League, League 1A is Haiti, right? And uh, if you can do business here, I'm telling you, you know, America is a cakewalk. <laughs> So that's that's one alternative perspective, you know, involved to it. LM says, um, "This came in the dashboard. We're trying to build a major hospital in Ocap. That's great. That's great. Um, find it on the Saka 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 page. I'll check them out. I'll check them out, LM. Thanks. I'll check it out. Um, do you think the elite class would be willing to cooperate with the organized, formerly diaspora organization? Uh, Yes, yes, you know, absolutely. If, if you know, you know, the, the, there is no one doing business in Haiti that if there was a serious group of investors that approached them and said, hey, we have a million dollars. What can we do? Let's work together. There isn't a single person in Haiti, business elite, non-business elite, that would say, nah, we're good. No, it's not No, right. The question is, do you have a diaspora that's formally organized that has a million dollars to act in Haiti? That's the question. Probably not. Probably not. That's really hard to find. Right? Which is one reason why I always say, you know, Haitian diaspora, organize yourselves in your country, where you are. There's, there's a before coming to Haiti, think about investing in your own communities. Like look, look at little Haiti right now. Look at little Haiti in uh, in, in in Miami. Right, it's being, you know, gentrified, genocide. There's, there's a reason why genocide and gentrified start the same way. There's there's an evisceration of culture and of a people happening in Little Haiti right now, and it's not because, you know, there's some malicious, you know, 
developers coming in. It's simply because, you know, Haitians, like black people, they don't come back to the communities to reinvest, right? There's this idea of we're going to leave and never come back. Whereas every other community, the Chinese, the Indians, you know, the Cubans, they understand this is, no, this is mine. This is ours, right? And we're going to keep it amongst us and we're going to develop, and we're going to shop amongst ourselves. We're going to support each other. You know, my people have humanity and we're going to support each other no matter what. Versus Haitians, Haitians are the first to talk bad about other Haitians. Haitians are the first people to call other Haitians devils uh, and then leave and never move back to, move back to, you know, to Haiti or move back to, or, or invest back in, in little Haiti, right? They move to the suburbs and, and forget all about it, right? Tell me I'm lying. Tell me I'm lying, right? Right? And, and so how can that group of people ever get to a point in, in, in society, economically speaking, to then pull their money together and, and impact to do real investment in Haiti? Never, because they're too busy not doing the right things they need to be doing in their countries. So how can they ever do something in Haiti? I don't understand, right? So that's the question. That's the way I, I flip that question back to you, man. Lucien says, uh, are universities, vocational schools developing labor force for future economic investments? Uh, yes, they are. You know, but Haiti lacks um, jobs. You know, the big thing about Haiti is Haiti lacks jobs. There's a big gap in jobs um, uh, in the country. Um, and, and because of the amount of investment, uh, not enough folks are coming in to provide opportunities. But in terms of skilled people, Haiti has that in spades, man. I'm telling you. Um, that's a conversation back and forth. I love it. I love it. Um, Haiti should adopt the Eastern Caribbean dollar until they get themselves together. Is that a thing? I, is that a thing? Is there an Eastern Caribbean? I, I just learned something. I have to Google that later. I, I didn't know that was a thing. Um, I would prefer a current car one currency plan. I don't know. I have, I have reservations about that, which I'll, I'll, I'll hold out for another day. Mm-hmm. Uh, Nostra says, doesn't care about the customer service, sleeps on the plane. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Um, <laughs> my libertarian says, Spirit Airlines, do they even offer you a seat? Or are you just flying by standing up? <laughs> Yo, low key, I think if they could get away with that, they would. If they could strap you up like along the walls or something. And then, or maybe just, I don't know. To have like little things you could hold on to instead of having you sit down, I promise you they would, so they can get more people in and make more money, right? <laughs> uh, Spirit Airlines, Spirit Airlines. Um, let's see. A lot of conversations back and forth here. I I think the conversations back and forth, so I'm skipping over quite a bit of it here. So looking for question statements to address directly. Oh, here's one. Uh, how is internet in Haiti? How is internet in Haiti? Is it reliable? Uh, thank you, Sean Pierre. Uh, I'm talking to you from Haiti right now using Haitian internet. And I haven't been choppy, I don't think. I haven't been staticky, I don't think. I've been pretty smooth and consistent. What do you guys think, right? And the reality is, is um, you know, uh, good internet, there's fiber. I, I use fiber in my office here. Um, I have two, two fiber lines, in fact, because there are periods where one fiber line is acting up or on the fritz and it can go on for a day or two. And given my, the way my business is structured, I can't go a day or two or a few hours and not be able to operate. You know, some businesses can. Some businesses can just, okay, it's fine. We're not, not going to have internet for a few hours. It's okay. But my business is I need internet 24-7. Anytime I need to be able to get up and do it. So, so I have two lines of fiber, one from Access Haiti, one from Natcom. In addition to, I have little 4G boxes that I carry around, and, and those are helpful as well. If you're going to come to Haiti, I think a lot of people, the negative comments that come from Haiti usually comes from people who will use 4G boxes exclusively. And the 4G boxes, um, you know, um, depends where you are. There's some places that, you know, one company is better than the other. Because you have to understand, Haiti is a very mountainous country, right? And the mountains interfere with wireless signals, right? And so, you know, one company may be better than another. If you're having issues with with one box, you probably try to try a friend's box for another for a while um, who has another company and see if it's better and then maybe then switch over to another company. 
Uh, when it comes to fiber, you know, not all places have fiber lines. Some places only have one fiber company that you can get. Um, Access Hate is interesting because even though it may not have a, a land fiber underneath, um, they have things called air fiber, which is like basically a satellite dish um, that goes to another uh, waypoint and then, then goes underground through fiber lines, which is very interesting, very ingenious, if you ask me. I actually have that in my office. So even though now they do have regular fiber in my area, uh, you know, the, their air fiber works so fine and so great. I'm like, ah, it's cool. You know, it's been more consistent, honestly, more days, more times than, than, uh, than NATCOM, uh, NATCOM actual land fiber, so I keep it. It can be very pricey, though. Just be aware of that. It can be pretty pricey. Uh, I know for the very basic plan for both my fibers, they're about 100 USD. And uh, for most Haitians, that's out of, out of the question. It's very expensive for most Haitians. Um, whereas um, in a lot of the Wi-Fi boxes, they're pay-as-you-go sort of deals, much more, much more inexpensive, much more affordable. Um, but again, the quality uh, is a lot less um, for, for, for those in those situations, right? Um, so yeah, I think I think I'll answer your question there, Pierre. Uh, internet is um, you know, internet's what you make it. You know? But uh, if you're coming here, um, certainly um, ask your Airbnb you know, how it is. Most hotels have you know the big ones, Marriott and um, the Common Room. I mean, most of these places have very good internet. So the vast majority of places you're going to go as a tourist, you get your internet's going to be fine. Right. So uh, thanks for that question, Pierre. I appreciate it. Um, uh, would a wind farm help Haiti in the energy sector, like other big countries? Would GE use fracking or natural gas? There will be no fracking in Haiti for natural gas. That natural gas can be imported. Uh, wind farms would be helpful um, for smaller cities and smaller areas, smaller towns, um, certainly. Uh, wind farms aren't necessarily ideal for very large cities like Port-au-Prince, Cabaïtien, because of the very large needs, energy needs, and consistency. And wind, as you know, when the wind is generally consistent, um, you know you can go periods where there's no wind. Right? It's the nature happens. It happens like that for nature. Um, and also storing that energy for peak periods uh, as well. So a lot of logistics involved, and, and, and unfortunately, the, the technology for renewable energy has a long ways to go. Um, um, for it to be if, um, uh, actually consistently if, uh, usable for 12 million people. So how many people are in Haiti? Um, but, um, but no, for, for smaller scale, you know, provincial areas, I think wind farms offer an exceptionally great opportunity, um, which should be pursued, right? What else we got? Um, what industry should Haiti invest in? Tourism, agriculture? Um, that is a great question, which my book is being created to, to help answer just because I, it, it would, I'd be here all day, every day if I answer those questions, you know, I, cause I really enjoy, I really do enjoy answering them. Um, it's just, I, I can't be repeating the same things over and over. That's why you can have a book, you will be able to buy the book, you will be able to read the different opportunities that exist, 101 opportunities that exist, uh, very soon before the end of the year, I promise we will have that book out and it will be purchasable for you. Okay. Um, do you think people should connect solar panel energy to the grid like we do? I, I agree. I, I, for example, I overproduce electricity in, in, in my office here. And so, <clears throat> you know, if I could sell some of that kilowatt back to the state and make some money off it too, that would be a win. So I certainly hope one day uh, Haiti gets to that point, right? When, when new things are being resold back to, to them, right? I certainly agree. Um, Chris Sanders says that thanks for highlighting Hayden the positive way. I have no problem. Appreciate that. Um, let's see. I'm going to Haiti uh, again in Port-au-Prince. Do you know any good museums? Uh, yes, I do. Uh, Mupana. Mupana. M-U-P-A-N-H. Am I saying it right? I hope I'm spelling it right. Mupana. Um, oh, Philip Charles already, already answered. Uh, thank you, Philip, for answering that question already. Appreciate that. Uh, Park, yeah. Park Historique Le Canne de is another good museum. I hear, I, I haven't actually been to the museum. I, uh, I went to an event that was happening on the grounds. I haven't visited the museum per se, so I can't personally say it's good, but uh, um, I've heard about it at least. Um, another good museum, by the way, is um, uh, the Fumba um, um, uh, Plantation over near Moulin Sumer. Uh, it's a very cool museum, a very well-preserved Plantation that um, 
Uh, you can see this is really cool. A lot of historical things there. Um, one of the few plantations that have been preserved for, for our history, which is even have the big old mill as well, the big old round thing. So that's another real cool museum people don't think about going to see, but it's, it's great. Um, I did a CJT episode on it actually, where we actually went through with a tour guide uh, in Creole and uh, we were able to see everything. So it's on CJT if you type in uh, CJT Museum, maybe it'll come up as the first or second one. So you definitely check that out. All right. Um, let's see. Uh, let's see what else we got here. Um, uh, any developments on waste management in Haiti? Uh, no development. <laughs> Sorry, no development. We have one new uh, one copper wheat has a waste management treatment facility plant, and that's it. You know, that's it. Uh, nothing else uh, has been talked about. We're on the works. No development. Denepa actually has been doing some great job in terms of connecting more and more homes in Haiti with uh, underground water, which is really, really great, which is uh, as clean as the water cabinets who come to your home. But uh, that, is, that is the extent of it. Uh, we have a long ways to go from that perspective. Thanks for that question there. Right. What other questions do we have? What other questions do we have? Let's see, going through, going through, going through, love the conversations. Um, do you feel you're getting too comfortable? I think it's conversations happening back and forth in my chat. I love it. I love the conversations back and forth. Love it. Uh, Hugo, how do you recommend the Haitian diaspora organizing their communities? What should the focus be? Um, thanks for that question, Dorothy Jean. Dorothy Jean comes up with that great question. Uh, how should you recommend the Haitian diaspora organize in their communities? Um, just, just that, organize in your communities. Organize where you are. Like, those Haitians who are in Little Haiti, organize. You know, ask yourself, what can we do every weekend to go support Haitian business? Right, there's a lot of Haitian businesses in, in uh, over there, and all it takes is you know use social media, come together. Hey, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a meet and greet coffee shop hangout session at this art gallery, and we're gonna you know see each of us pay five bucks, and then, and then at the end of the night we're gonna see how many people are here, and then we're gonna buy one of the art pieces, right, and we'll put it you know at our groups or you know organization, you know, or maybe each of us the heads of the organization will share a piece of art. And, and it becomes a conversational point to drive more business. Now, there's so many ways to support your, your, your community, um, but that's what you have to do. You have to make a conscious effort to say, hey, we're, we're the Little Haiti um, Economic Compact. And, and, and every week you guys think of a way to do things in Little Haiti to support the entrepreneurs and the businesses that are there, right? Um, you know, that's really it, you know? Um, uh, and I think so I that's the question I had to do with communities where you live. And of course, you know, being organized where you live will then ultimately impact what you can do in, in Haiti. Because Haiti is a different, different uh, beast, right? And if you can't organize in your own communities, in, in, the, in the easiness and safetitude of America, what chance are you going to have in Haiti? The wild, wild west, that is Haiti. JK, no brother, there is 4G. There is 4G in Haiti. Plenty of 4G. Okay. Um, uh, the book will be uh, a Bible. Of doing, I don't know. Don't set me up that high, music lover. <laughs> uh, don't set it up that high. Don't, don't set it up that high, brother. It's, I'm going to do my best to impart knowledge. Right? Um, don't, don't set me up. It's like telling a good joke, man. The more you hype up the joke, you know, the more the joke isn't, isn't there. You know, don't hype me up so much. But nonetheless, it's going to be a starting point. The book is going to be a starting point of conversation you know, that folks can take and go from there. Um, is there any conversation between exploring for oil in Haiti like DR and Jamaica are doing? Nope, there is not. There is not. That would that would require a competent Haitian government, and we don't have that. We don't have that in Haiti. We're very far from a government that is foreseeing and doing the things it needs to be doing to improve itself um, organically and structurally. We're very, 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 very far away from that. Um, and then, and finally, Sangela TV says, um, um, imagine a bank of the diaspora, factor of the diaspora, instead of every individual waiting in line, uh, right time to invest in a little business. I agree. I agree. Certainly there needs to be a uh, larger impact project station diaspora. But, but as always, I, you know, um, I always ask the diaspora, what, what are you doing in your own area, right? There, there shouldn't be a conversation about a little Haiti being gentrified, right? I mean, if you can't control 
a little bit of territory in America, right? You know, New York has already been completely gentrified. The little Haiti up in New York, even though they did a symbolic win and named one of the streets Judge I Gisali Street. Yay, whoop de doo right? But if you can't control a little stretch of territory in America, what chance do you think you guys can organize and do something in Haiti, right? So I, I'd say focus on America, <laughs> uh, please, uh, before you, you come to the wild, wild west of Haiti as a group, right? Uh, finally, Dorothy Jean says, uh, my last comment, Dorothy Jean, are you ready uh, and excited about the summit? Uh, you'll be speaking up uh, in OCOP, and uh, um, I, I am excited, and I am very um, humbled to be have been invited to speak at the Tourism Innovation Summit. And, uh, and, and I, I don't know, I've, I've been, I got the little preview of, of the talking point of my panel slash just, or just myself, I may be addressing, and I'm really excited about that topic. Cannot wait to get into the, into the weeds on that topic. So again, if you guys have not uh, signed up for the Tour Tourism Innovation Summit, uh, make sure you sign up. Um, I think they have this real cool thing that where you know you're gonna pay, but then you're gonna get like a like a like a device that allows you to see 3D, like a 3D tour, um, and participate in in uh, in the in in the summit and or view sites of OCOP um, for that same price of admission, right? Even though maybe it's probably, it's, it's gonna be virtual, right? And so um, when is it? It's gonna be end of October. The end of October is when it's gonna be. So do do definitely check that out, all right? In October, Tourism just tourism Innovation Summit. Tourism Innovation Summit. Google it, Google that. First, first thing will come up will be that. And you'll be able to see the website, see the details. So do check that out. Thank you, Dorothy for uh, bringing that up. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I've been here three hours, <laughs> two hours, 54. So I want to thank you guys so much, um, you know, today for, for being out, hanging or hanging out. I coughed up a storm there, but I lived. Uh, remember, um, see Jensen on location, we did a, a brand new um, uh, firefighter uh, episode. So do go check that out. Um, had a great time producing it. And I, you know, give it some love. It's only at 1.7K. Let's give it some love. Let's give it some shares. Give us some likes. Go check it out. Uh, oh, shout out real quick. Life, Mari. What's up, Mari? Get a shout out to my homegirl. Uh, Life in Haiti, Mari. Good to have you in the chat. I had to really quick say what's up. Uh, happy to have you in the chat. You're late, Mari. You missed the whole episode. What's up? What's going on? <laughs> Good to see you, Mari. Happy to have you in the chat. Um, uh, as always, I do appreciate you guys. Squirt Cash is here. Yeah, that's a thing. If you want to go ahead and drop, drop a little love, uh, all the money is used to do some really great projects, go out and support the staff um, and do some great things uh, in the country as it relates to produ pr you know, production. Uh, it allows us to uh, you know, pay for lodging, pay for food when we go out to Andeo. Um, so don't, don't be shy. Go ahead and drop some, drop some love uh, on the square cash. But as always, share the stream, particularly for those of you guys who commented, those who uh, provide your perspective. Um, you, you're as much of a host to this as I am. This is as much as your production as, as, as my production. And so do make sure to share the stream, give it a like, the like also helps with the algorithm and everything. So, you know, if you appreciate this conversation, pound that like button, just pound it, hit that like button, right? And after you hit that like button, you can, you know, very easily share it. And this stream is also, don't forget the stream also is, um, going to be replayed. So you can always skip around and, and, and get to the news. If you came too late, if you skip the news. You can check that out. Uh, I think I challenged somebody to give me the timestamps um, for this episode so I can put into the description. So if somebody was watching and, and keeping the timestamps of what we talked about, um, you know, thanks in advance if you do it. <laughs> Otherwise, I, I don't have time. I do half a day of preparing the notes. I do three hours, you know, talking to you guys. I don't have time to also put in you know, timestamps. All right. So it's so, a so last reminder for that. Nick, my own appreciator, brother. Thanks for the $10 CAS. Is that a Canadian dollar? Thanks for that. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, much appreciated. Uh, that certainly will help. For show, for show, for show, for show, for show. Thank you, McNall. It's going to go to the war chest and allow us to do bigger and better things. Right? All right, guys, that's a wrap. I want to thank you guys. We'll be back next Sunday, 11 a.m.-ish. Right? And guys, until we're back at it again, we'll be back at it again. Peace. <laughs>